Welcome to episode 111 of Chew on This, a Nerd United podcast. I'm BJ. Vic. We are uh, officially in Star Wars month, folks, and this is a, a first of three special podcasts we have going that's dedicated to Star Wars. This first episode, uh, we're going to be talking to Frank Ordaz, who was uh, a map painter for uh, not just Star Wars, but uh, the original Star Wars, uh, what was it Return of the Jedi, but also a bunch of other movies, which, we'll, which we're going to be talking to him about. Um, and then our, our second podcast is we're going to revisit The Force Awakens. So it's like a Force Awakens special edition podcast. And then uh, lastly, we'll go into The Last Jedi when it comes out. So it's a pretty awesome uh, Star Wars month. But this one is all about Mr. Frank or Daz and one of our longest, probably if not the longest podcast that we've done. <laughs> but it's a great interview. Yeah, it's definitely our longest. I think it, it's it's going to be a little bit over like two hours or something like that. So um so stick with it. Uh, it's it's got so much information that we uh, we never thought we'd get, <laughs> which is good. Um, so a little little backstory. If you haven't heard uh, the first two podcasts with Frank, is is we met him. We ran the Star Wars panel at the West Sac Expo uh, this year back in I think what May. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, it was a few months ago. <clears throat> right, and um, and Frank was on that panel, and we had scheduled him also to do a separate podcast that uh, that day as well and i guess we made you know, a pretty decent impression and he agreed to just come on and, and give us a little bit more time because you know the second the second podcast we had that was one-on-one -on -one with him felt a little rushed um and it was I loud there was, too there was a lot of like loudness and like that auction yeah going they were on auctioning and... off something down below and you know so so we wanted to get a little bit more in depth. I knew somebody who had worked on so many movies had more stories than just 45 minutes worth. Yeah. So we, and we went back to him. What was really special about this one though, is we actually drove to his hometown and went to his gallery because he is, is a beautiful little gallery and he does, his paintings are amazing. And, uh, it was really cool to just sit there in his gallery amongst, you know, all his paintings. And, and there's like a lot of star Wars memorabilia in there. Um, and we were able to just sit down and just have a, a, an awesome chat with them. And then like afterward, we just kept like, even when the podcast was over, we kept talking and he was showing us all this cool shit. And then, uh, then we went to lunch with him and kept talking. I mean, it was like, it was just a dream come true, man. It was such a fun day. And, uh, you know, it's really cherish that cherish that those moments, like hanging out with him. I wish we had a. I wish we had a camera in the beginning before oh, we started man. recording. I know, just because he brought out all that memorabilia and showed it to us. So yeah, that's. I guess that's the perks of being uh, the quote unquote on air talent to get to <laughs> be able to see that stuff. <laughs> right, I, I know use the on air talent loosely, uh, but we got to see a lot of cool things um, that uh, that we didn't think we were going to get. I know, to get to see, that and it was awesome that Frank actually, uh, you know. Port, uh, puts out proudly of our gift that we gave to him from the <laughs> yeah, expo, which right. is awesome. Um, <laughs> if anybody needs a reminder or doesn't know, the gift that you know we give all of our the people that we interview is uh, usually a stick figure, and we, ha we were able to give it to Frank in person, which made a little bit different. So we don't know what to give somebody drawing wise who is an artist. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's so, so ironic. Yeah, so I was like, I was thinking, you know, this is, I don't know, there's nothing I could do to match. I mean, this guy painted, he painted the, the chasm where the emperor died. There's right. nothing I could do <laughs> that would top that. There's no drawing in the world. I'm like, well, let's just stick with what we do, which is <laughs> stupid stick figure drawings. So that's exactly what we gave him, and we did it paint by numbers to make it even dumber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to repo we'll have to post that. Uh, if we, we have a picture of it somewhere, we'll have to repost. Yeah. It, if you if but if you ever get the get a chance to stop by um, of Frank's uh, Frank's. Uh, a gallery. It's in Auburn. Um, it's just called the Frank Ordaz Gallery, I believe it's called, and it's it's in Auburn, California. Go check it out. It's it's a small. It's like a small downtown area. It looks like it's great. Um, and again, this is, there's so much stuff that Frank tells us in in this episode, and there was so much more that we couldn't even say in the air. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was it was great. It was a, it was a great time. And he's such a. I mean, he's just got a wealth of of stories, but he's also just really generous and a really cool guy. Like. 
I, I can't wait to hang out with them again at some point in the future. Um, and Frank, Frank, if you're listening, I, I will stop by at some point and have that bourbon with you. <laughs> While I sit two and a half hours north going, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you pictures. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're going to podcast together <laughs> and drink bourbon. All right. Well, uh, so like for you guys to, to enjoy this uh, podcast with Frank Ordaz, uh, Matt Painter of Return of the Jedi and many, many other uh, movies. Uh, enjoy. had this gallery now seven, seven, eight years. seven or eight years yeah. right on that's yeah. that's an accomplishment yeah, yeah it is you know i remember uh, you were saying that this is something you've yeah, always guys bought something right before you but oh really yeah <laughs> right on what did they buy i had a print up there so i had to replace it you know <laughs> You could, you could put awesome. our you could put our uh, chew on this paint by numbers up there. Yeah, and put a price and tag say, on it. Say it's, say it's, <laughs> priceless. Yeah, priceless. Yeah, <laughs> not for sale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> one of a kind. Oh, five dollars. It's yeah. yours. <laughs> <laughs> so I've already I've already hit record. Um, so you know we we're here with Frank Ordaz again. We're in his studio. We drove here uh, up to uh, lovely Auburn. It's a nice little town here. I've never um, been here before. I've been here once or twice driving through. Um, but uh, so we we talk more about the Star Wars stuff at the uh, at the expo. We kind of want to expand on that a little bit because you know you have a lot of you have a lot of movie credits on your on your resume or IMDb page now. Um, so. You know, BJ, what movie do you want to start off on? Well, I think we talked a little bit about E.T. and how, you know, you work with Spielberg and stuff. But how right. did you – so did you get that gig based on uh, your Return of the Jedi work at that point? Or was that first? What was uh, first? That was first. E.T. was first. E.T. was first. And uh, at that moment in time, we were working on several movies. We were working – uh, I think we were finishing on Dark Crystal and uh, also finishing up on Poltergeist. Oh, wow. And uh, so <clears throat> there were three of us in the math department. And so we all kind of got as assigned movies. And I was assigned to work with Chris and Evans and Michael Pingrazio. And uh, so I was... I was backup at that time. Those yeah. were the two guys that were there. The, the lead and guys, they, yeah. The lead guys there initially. So I, I was brought in just to, to pick up whatever they, they didn't want, they didn't want to do, or that they had selected to do. <laughs> I'll do and it. And so it's like uh, I don't think either of them wanted to do the opening shot. I don't know why. And it, it just fell to me. It's like okay, Frank, you're going to do the opening shot for ET, the establishing shot. I'm like okay. And, I, and so, so the first uh, thing is default, so to speak. That's awesome. So the first thing you see in ET is your essentially your yeah. Work. It's a dark piece, so it's really not that dramatic. I think, if, but I, your your I, shot still starts the movie. Yeah. I mean, that's like <laughs> the first thing you see right after, right after what the universal sign. The, yeah. The next thing you see is what you do. That's pretty big deal. It, it's dark and descriptive, and I th and I think if I would have had more experience now, I would have made it more punchier. But it. it there was a lot of, I was like 25 years old, 24, 25. So I was really nervous because I'd never worked on an image that large. The painting is about 10 by 10. And it's just on, that's a, it's just on canvas. That's enormous. We were out, I was out on the stage working on that, working with uh, acrylics and uh, spray paint. And I just had never worked that big before. And you just don't say no, you know, when you're called to be on the team. You just say, yes, coach, <laughs> you go in. And you just act like you know what you're doing. And so... Um, 
So if Spielberg was like, hey, get, get me some coffee, kid, you're like, right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, How do you like it? <laughs> ILM, ILM was also doing work for other companies. Yeah. It, was, it was designed, originally it was a group of, of, of guys who were journeymen artisans who were doing the, the, the effects and models for Star Wars. And then after uh, Empire Strikes Back, you know, George got the idea. Let's let's make it a company and work for to create Different. effects for other for other uh, movies, and that's what launched ILM. And so, um, it it it. it I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that essentially, I mean, well, we kind of went away, from, you know, we kind of yeah. went on tangents, which is what we always do. Yeah. But essentially, ILM, I mean, to this day, oh. is still doing right. just that. Well, I remember the question. So, uh, George had had a long uh, standing relationship with uh, Steven Spielberg. They'd worked on, on uh, Indiana Jones by the time I, yeah. I mean, the Raiders of Lost Raiders Star, Star. By the time I got there. And so uh, he he was doing a, a effects works for uh, for him, and then their big client was Paramount, who they started doing the work for uh, Star Trek, and um, it just starts snowballing after after, after that. So uh, the t- the only time I met Steven Spielberg was in dailies when he had to see it. And, mm. and I'll tell you, it was nerve wracking because you just don't know if it's yay or nay. You're sitting down. You know, the and you're spending like weeks on these paintings, right? Uh, like that open house. Three, I think it took me about two or three weeks to do that opening shot. Yeah. Uh, 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 now, in my skill set, I could probably do that in a couple days. That's amazing. I'm serious. That's but crazy. Back then, it was like, you know, it, it's nerves <laughs> versus pressure, right? Versus now you have a production person saying, "Okay, when are you going to be done?" <laughs> uh, and the production person saying, "We need to have it done by then." And then you have camera guys who are setting up going, okay, when is it ready? Because we need to shoot this. So you've got, besides just the creative part, because you're working on a team, you also have these individuals going chop, chop. Right. When, when can we now get to work? So it's, 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 <laughs> That's not just, it's, it's not just a simple go and do it. And uh, a lot of people, I mean, I've talked to a lot of artists, but I don't know if I could do that. You know, it's, it's hard yeah. enough just doing a painting, but now you're juggling people, the pressure of when you're, when you're going to have your product done so that we could film it. Right, right. And so, I, you know, I'm a kid from East L.A., so there's, there's that part that is <laughs> kind of tough that you just put on the front that, you know, I'm just going to do this now. Yeah, just leave me alone and let me, you know, i yeah. got to do this. And yeah. Half of life is, is putting on a performance. Is that better? <laughs> okay. half, half of life is putting is putting on a performance, and so uh, I just performed like I knew what I was doing, and I really didn't. <laughs> that's the truth, but, you know. I, by the time by the time I left Fake this it. film, I pretty much knew what I had to do, and yeah. I could do it because you if you just put in hours and hours and hours, and you just get pretty good at, at what you're doing so just f- by putting. In. Fake it till you make it, essentially. Yeah. I'm sure I I would uh, I think I told you guys this in my last uh, when we last spoke. It, if the internet was around then and they could see what I had done, I would not have been hired. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. because I hadn't done really many landscapes. I had just done portraits. Portraits, yeah. And so uh, Dennis Murin, I came up to me when I when I first came to I eleven. He goes, you know, I really really like that portrait. Man, that is really good. And so it wasn't like, Frank, you're a really good landscape. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you know, God has a way of doing things. Uh, I, at, that, at that moment in time, there were individuals that appreciated talent. And they appreciated the talent that I had to be able to, to paint a good portrait. And Dennis Murray really was a person who really respected talent. That's cool. And I've heard he always wanted to paint. So he really respected artists who were good painters. So um, it's not like that anymore, only because of what I hear. But back then, you, you it, it's like guys in, uh, I, always, I always like sports analogies. And, uh, uh, and I, I'm a Raiders guy. I'm Raiders Nation. Right. And, and I, re, I remember... <laughs> Just uh, do it, baby. Who was, uh, yeah, who was, who, was, who was the guy who was the owner of the Raiders? Help me here. Uh, Al, Al Davis. Davis. Yeah. His philosophy was, if, if you're going to draft somebody... 
just draft the best athlete. He might not be the person that is, uh, is the person you may need, but you always get the best athlete available. And I had a, little bit of, had a little bit of that. Even though I wasn't a landscape painter, the concept was the guy's really talented. He'll figure it out. Yes. He'll, he'll do the yeah. best he can. And, 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 he'll work his ass off I'm for I'm really us. grateful for that mindset. Right. <clears throat> for people who are able to spot talent. Might not be. It's like we can make this guy do that. If he can do this for portraits, he can do that for landscapes. That's just crazy that you got hired that way. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nowadays, unbelievable. Nowadays, that would you're right. It would never, never happen. Be like, hey, I'm really good at, at talking. Let's hire this guy to be a lead actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, Let, put, let's, let's fire Conan and get yeah. this guy for a talk show. Or, let's, or yeah, let's put this guy at, at like a reporter, you know, for the TV show. You're just you're really good people. See, what you need is just somebody to believe in you. Somebody right. who believes in you that you, I think you could pull that off. And, and, and then you're off to the races because what you're looking for is an opportunity. So right. I'm thankful that Dennis Murin et al. gave me an opportunity. And uh, well, so I think the rest that, was up to me, right? Right. right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. At the panel, it was, uh, that was something that C. Andrew Nelson said. It was like, uh, you, know, you know, most of it, a lot of it is, some of it's luck, but most of it is you actually rising to the occasion. And, or just being ready when the opportunity yeah, like, comes. That's what happened right. with you. Right. Like, hey, I paint portraits. And they're like, well, we need your landscape. And you just did it. Right. Well, they sent me. They sent me a. Uh, I have it here. If you want to look at uh, a photograph, I said, well, why don't you copy this photograph? And it was of a building with like a million windows in it. And I hate painting windows. You know? <laughs> you know? good, good thing they got started at windows. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. That's, I, 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 if you look at my work, you don't see too many buildings. And I hate painting windows <laughs> with a passion. And so, what do they give me? They give me this like space age. Building with windows, and I'm like, oh. They knew it God. too. They interviewed somebody in your family. Oh, like, he hates God. windows. What's the worst thing we can give him? The paint, yeah. paint right? Yeah. <laughs> and so I worked on this. Empire thing. State Building. <laughs> I worked on this thing for two weeks, you know, using an airbrush, and uh, it's like the most photorealistic image I've ever done in my life. That's so cool, <laughs> you know. And I and I literally put myself on a schedule. I got up like at eight o'clock every day. And I worked till like seven o'clock at night. Oh my god! And even my friends were going, "Man, you're really taking this seriously." I go, "Man, this is an opportunity." They called me up. Yeah, they got my name from right. you know from my college. So I'm, you know, I'm rising to the case. This is an opportunity. So a lifetime, basically. I was, <laughs> I was diligent, and and they selected me, and so. Uh, I mean, that's basically led you to everything, right, in your life. It, it changed my life. Yeah, it changed. You know, it, it's it's amazing, and half. You know, half of life is seizing that opportunity. When it falls on your lap, you just thank God and go, okay, now you're up to the plate. Now you've you got to hit it out of the park. And you know, that's, that was my mindset. My mindset was, this has got to be the best thing I've ever done in my life. And you still have that building? I still have the building. No, I still have the, 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 I mean, the paint. Yeah. The painting of the building. Yeah, I'll show oh, it to you. That's oh, cool. That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah. It, I'll take a picture of that. I look at it now and my sphincter tightens up. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's so tight, you know. <laughs> and I look and I go, "How did I? How did I do that?" Well, I was, you, you had know, to, because you had to. I had to. It's a, how, it's uh, amazing what you could do when you're, you, in your mind, you have to do it. That's probably the only thing that you can't sell in this in this entire uh, gallery is probably that one painting. Sorry, that's what, probably the only painting that you won't sell in this entire gallery, right? <laughs> yeah, it, 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 Priceless. It's it because it's a, it's a testament what you can do. When you feel like you, your life depends on it. Yeah, it's amazing what you can do when your your back is up against the wall. Where they call it fight or flight. Right, yeah. right. And I, I, I fought. You fought. Yeah. Yeah. So, to going back to the to ET, was that the only shot you did? Was the opening shot, or you did other mats for that? For that. Uh, that, uh, that, I think that was it for me. As I remember now, yeah, I just did the opening shot. So back then, it was it was literally like you didn't like pitch for, hey, I think I could do really well on this movie, or I could do really well in this movie. Yeah, that basically. didn't come to later on uh, because uh, Pingrazio was supervisor. That didn't happen till you know I became supervisor. Mm. That didn't come till you know I had more ability. I learned on the on the job. That didn't come till till later where I go, you know, this is kind of I'd like to do that, and then I would get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but but, the, but see, but the way I looked at it, whatever I got was going to be cool. 
Because yeah. when I was working on Jedi, it's like, how can I lose? Whatever I'm going to get is going to be <laughs> cool. It's return to the Jedi. You know? oh, buildings you with know? windows? Never mind. Let, the, let this guy do it. <laughs> well, it, 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 it oh, it's a good thing you need to do Coruscant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and like on Jedi, I, I don't think Mike or Chris wanted to paint uh, the Falcon. They didn't want that what shot. What the? Yeah. And it was like, no, I want that shot. And I go, okay, you can have it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It just has they one window to, on the cockpit, do that's the, it. They wanted to do the big scenes, you know. I yeah. think Chris wanted to do, you know, the Ewok, you know. The village. Uh, the village. Those guys wanted to do that. And I was like, yeah, yeah no, I want to do the, the Falcon. So, <laughs> that's so crazy yeah. that you're so spoiled at your job that you're like, I don't want to paint the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> 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 Imagine that, like, no, I don't, I don't feel like acting in this scene right now with Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> get someone else yeah, to do it. Else to do it. <laughs> um, so from there, uh, so you worked on you on that dude. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Soundbite. Yeah. Uh, I, you worked on one of my favorite uh, Star Trek movies of like all time. Like I love Star Trek Two: The Wrath of Khan. Yeah. It's, it's like one of my all time favorites that, uh, that movie. Was, you know, period. That was a fun movie. I, got, I remember meeting the director, and uh, remember Island is small, so you get to meet a lot. Yeah, you get to meet Nimoy. Get to meet all these people. <sighs> and the director comes up, and this kid. Uh, I shouldn't call him a kid. This guy definitely has a chip on his shoulder. He goes, "Yeah, did you see that first one, man? It sucked." It sucked. This one is going to be bitching. This one is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> this just trying to pump everybody up. And it was. It was, oh, you know, for the most, it was extremely entertaining. Yeah, it was a good one. And so um, I was working on, on uh, so the Eden Cave, working on the nebulas, working on um, uh, the, the planet. One of the, uh, is it Vulcan? Did you do Vulcan? Uh, where Spock is from? Uh, Wait, did they show uh, that planet on that movie? I, I don't remember. That was remember. the second one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the I, second I, I, one. Uh, the third one. I'm sorry. That's the third one where they go back and, and search for Spock. Right, right. Yeah, uh, the I, Gen- the uh, Genesis Project and all yeah, that. Yeah, I worked that's on, right. Yeah, yeah, I worked on one of those one of those scenes. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Search for Spock wasn't as I got good, a, I, but I have one the of those outtake photos in the back. I'll show you those. Oh my god! And all these Star Trek. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got so many. I'll give you guys some. Oh man, I'm getting goosebumps. Because <laughs> they shot, they shot, you know, that scene where they where they find, you know, his coffin, you know, that like kind of right. over over at uh, a Golden Gate Park. And so they just took out the bee smoke, you know, that, you know, that frankincense smoke, and they, yeah. you know, they fogged it all up. And uh, that's where they filmed that scene. That's where they filmed that scene. Oh my god, the Genesis oh god. planet, the Genesis planet in Golden Gate Park. <laughs> my, my sister owns a home there. Yeah. <laughs> Coffin might still be there. Yeah. <laughs> You'll recognize it. You'll recognize it. Oh my god, that's that's, <laughs> that's really cool. Uh, so after that, I mean, definitely Return of the Jedi, I think it's like that that was a big thing. So beside the, I know you did the opening shot of that, and then you did the shot where the Emperor is being tossed down into the, the, into the, into the, the Death Star, the shaft. Yeah. 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 But for, actually, I, I had a question. That's the photograph behind me on the wall where George is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I see it, it now. You can probably just see the very Just top see the top of it, of it. yeah. That's when George came in, looked at it, and... Uh, I thought he was going to say it's too blue because I, I made the shaft kind of blue. Was and that, he liked it. Was, was that like, in your mind that what the shaft looked like, or somebody gave you like a kind of like a sketch? Kind of no, we just got I just, like I sh- uh, was showing some those early black and white, just black and white. So somebody and I looked that, at I, and I, then you created the rest of it. Yeah, and and uh, so uh, you know here's the far, the fun part of the job. You could you could you could go up to uh, the guys in editing and say you know I'll, I want to see some clips from. Uh, you know, uh, the Star Wars, uh, the first one with, and, and from, you know, Empire. And, and they played for you. So you look at it and go, okay, this is what I got to match. This is what I got to match. And so... Uh, right, because you were going from the first... first right, I want, I want right. it to be consistent. So I, I, I got the colors, you know, printed out a couple of them. And so I didn't want to make it exactly like it, mm-hmm. but I wanted to still have the flavor of, of the original so Star cool. Wars. So, you know... I. Why was there a shaft in the Emperor's throne room anyway? <laughs> was that like his, like, where he threw all his trash? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is well, this doing it's, here? It's a movie. Nothing makes sense. You know? And here you see these little teddy bears on Endor. Yeah, come on. 
You know, you just got to suspend the <laughs> logic know. and go with it. You know? <laughs> I never thought about yeah. why that is actually. Like, this is really dangerous. Somebody should, somebody should really wall this off. Instead of just like a little like register. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> the rail was like up in his head. He could have like fell it yeah, over, exactly. you know? Yeah. <laughs> You get a trip on something. We you were get just a trip on one of the Imperial Guards like gowns. <laughs> <laughs> We were just talking about it in an episode a few episodes ago, how Luke just inadvertently just throws his lightsaber. But he has that great line where he's like, I'm a, I'm a Jedi like my father you know, yeah. before yeah. me, which is a great line. But he tossed his lightsaber away, and then the Emperor zapped him. I'm <laughs> like, why would you throw your weapon away? The most dangerous man in the entire galaxy, yeah. and you toss the only thing that can save you. <laughs> like, he's just going to let me go. Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I beat yeah. Vader. I'm, I'm, we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's all nope. You know what's really funny? Because uh, uh, my son goes on YouTube and, and and sees all these guys that have played, you know, that scene and done, and done voiceovers. Oh, right, uh, right. And music and yeah. like, yeah. And, you know, and just make comedy, you know, comedy <laughs> jokes, you know, from those particular scenes. You've seen them, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I saw when one you, of... When uh, you get the E.T. thing, right, do you, un- do you understand, like, the... The impact that that movie's going to have at that time. Do you understand like what you're what you're making, or they're just like, here, go paint this, you know, like because you you're you don't get to read the script like everybody else, you know, the, the people in front of the camera. But you know, when you came on to Jedi, you knew how big Star right. Wars was. Already was. But huh? when you're doing something like E. T. and you know it's Spielberg, yeah. Are do you have those goosebumps like, oh my god, I'm painting something for Spielberg, and this is going to be like a cultural phenomenon because E. Yeah. T. is right up there. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, what was your thinking when you had that? When they're like, "Hey, you're going to paint the opening shot for ET." I, this, there's, there's probably more p- pressure because I definitely had an awareness of his track record. I mean, I, I, I was already a big fan of Jaws, Jaws big fan and of uh, Close Encounters. Uh, 1941, I think he yeah. did too. He, yeah, yeah, that, that was his only. That bomb, was a tough which one. Which was kind of a, still a fun movie to. Look I like at. watching it now with yeah. all the SNL people in it, Saturday Night Live people. So, yeah. it, was, it, so it was kind of a bomb. Of course, <laughs> Hollywood. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he had done. Let's see. He also had done. You know, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. So that he already had a track record that this is a big time movie director. So you know, I, I, in my mind, I, I knew I had to perform. You know, <laughs> like in a, on a sports right. day, it's like getting getting drafted. I'm a Raiders fan. Getting drafted for the Raiders, you already know they've gone to Super Bowls. Right. You know, Daryl Lamont, got all these guys. There's <laughs> already. Do you uh, get to go to those premieres? Do you guys get to go to the island people? Yeah, right yeah. So here, so here's the thing. So we had a premiere. Uh, uh, we had two premieres. I think one was you know down in San Francisco, and I went to the one in Corte Madera. And uh, I think Steel, uh, Spielberg was there. It was just for just for ILM, and so they premiered the movie for us in the afternoon. And uh, after it was done, it was like ka-ching. <laughs> oh, just you. It's like, oh, this is going to be a major. Like Tiger Woods' dad. Yeah. He's just like ka-ching, yeah, ka-ching, I'm ka-ching. serious. It was ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. I mean, you could just. Just was everyone like not a dry eye in that house? So I'm sure with ET. We're talking. You got we're, screened Howard, Howard the Duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you were like could chin for ET, and you were done with your heart. You were like, oh, it was kind of like, get me out of here. It, it, it was that. Bad. I bet. Yeah. Honey, we might need to. But come on. <laughs> why, why do you have to do this? This interview was going so well. <laughs> Frank is just like interview was, over. I was so, uh, yeah, I was, I was getting, oh, uh, knocks the mic over. So, uh, <laughs> right. But check this out. So afterwards, uh, I think they knew also they, that they had a hit. Why? Because they had reserved. I think I mentioned this on other podcasts. They'd reserved a yacht. Uh, for us, and I don't so think you did. oh, so they had yeah. so uh, whether it was uh, Steve well, or podcasts. George, they, they, they threw a party, you know, there in San Francisco Bay for us on a yacht, this little yacht, and had a reggae band on the first floor, and they were cooking uh, hamburgers, and Spielberg was on the boat, and George was, and I'd say there's probably about forty five of us, you know, I was small, wow, and uh, we're just yachting around the bay going. This is going to be great. And, you know, Spielberg is holding court, just thanking all of us, and George is holding up the wall. And back then he was he's different than he, like yeah, he said he is now. Yeah, kind of an introvert. He's just kind yeah. of just looking at us. Literally, <laughs> just kind of, like, uh, and, and he, I, 
I mean, we would read Rolling Stone interviews just to know what he thought. Right. And, and in that famous Rolling Stone interview, George goes, you know, I, I really don't know how to, you know. Uh, Hang out with my employees yeah, or talk to my people. That's what he said. And it's like, yeah. I, 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 I guess true. when you're the boss, you just yeah. got to be the boss. Right. I mean, I well, you know, nothing pre- prepared him for that. All of yeah. a sudden, you know, he starts a company. Now he's got to be the boss. So he had to uh, grow into that role. So we're, I remember I'm 24 years old. I'm on this boat. I'm eating hamburgers, and in my mind, kind of like you guys were going, I remember Steven Spielberg. (laughs) He's just just talking shit. I I don't even remember. But it was like, how cool is this? Right. Life can't get any better right now. This is pretty awesome. And and then the other part in my mind is, man, this is either going to go from here down or here up. Because right, that's, right. this is before the movie release, right? This is before the movie release, yeah. But wow. you could just tell uh, uh, everybody's spirits were high because we knew we had a mega a hit, hit, yeah, and we did. Oh yeah, uh, and I still cry to this day. Yeah, it, it, I mean that movie is just. Really I'll never yeah. forget. And it launched, you know, uh, what's what's your name? Drew uh, Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Yeah, oh, yeah. Even even that guy Thomas is Henry still Thomas. doing. Yeah, is still uh, uh, still, uh, still working. Yeah. yeah. And um, <clears throat> uh, let's say Coyote. You know, uh, that actor, yeah, Peter Coyote, Peter Coyote he was yeah. in that movie. Right, right. So there was a lot of good actors in that. And the, it, it was the first time I saw the story myself, and I went, man, this is really good. Especially the scene where the bikes. Now, those kids were brats. Goosebumps, Yeah, man. they would come in, you know, we shot them on stage, and just bratty kids. And it's like, you know, live it up, kids, because this is about as good as it's going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah no now. doubt. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's kind of like so, that with the Goonies, too. It's kind of like the same yeah. thing. You know, the and I was also, at that point, also a fan, probably the first time I've said this, a fan of, of, of Mike's and, and, and Chris, because they'd been doing this for a while. So they were setting up these shots, you know, uh, you know with these small models and creating these mat. Mike these, and Chris who? Uh, Chris Evans and Mike Pingrazio. Okay. And so uh, they were doing some cutting-edge stuff, and I'm like, I mean, I got a front row seat seeing what, what these guys so cool. are doing, you know, and it, and and you know, to this day, Amblin, you yeah. know, Spielberg uses, you know, the that the that scene, that, yeah, the, you know, the, the bike, you know, with yeah, ET in the, the basket and the boy <laughs> pedaling, you know, that, that's been Grazio's <clears throat> scene. A little, that's so you know, cool. I think so. Or, it's either one of the two, either Chris's or I think it's Pigrazzo, because he's a top dog. He would have given himself. It's probably, it's probably Michael's. He would have given yeah, himself yeah. Like, the big one. And you actually watch them shoot that scene? Work on it, yeah. I'm, I'm watching the whole thing. I'm going, yeah, was, it, was it a model? Was it like yeah. the yeah, kid in the bike a, and the ET? Yeah, like, it's a small yeah, yeah. model. It was stop 12 motion, inches. Right? 12 yeah. It was stop motion, right, I think? Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, so they're working with Phil Tippett, you know, on, on stage. And I'm watching all this, and I'm going, how cool is that, you know? <laughs> So it's it's an assemblage of stop motion, you right. know, with with the matte painting. So not only did you get to actually be part of ET, you got to actually see all the magic happening. Too. Right. Yeah. And 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 Michael Pigrazzo is really the true. He's still working at Weta. He's oh wow. He, he really is the true uh, matte artist genius because he he got bored with just straight matte painting. Hmm. Uh, and so he started combining models with uh, with backgrounds. So he's uh, for for this one scene in ET. He actually started uh, working with uh, the model makers and creating these redwood uh, foreground elements to combine with a painting behind that. So that when the camera moved, you have what's called a parallax. Okay. See so if you if, if if the camera moves in on a painting, all the elements are static. Static, right? Yeah. Whereas if you actually have some models, if you move in, then you you have some movement. The perspective, yeah. right between depth, right. the fore depth. and depth to the foreground elements <clears throat> in your painting, and he recognized that, so he he integrated that for me uh, for ET. I think it was the first time he did that. Wow! Uh, and then he used that in his in his shot for uh, for Jedi. So he used yeah. uh, he was he was working with some models in that in that front scene. The speeder so, bike, the speeder bike scene. Or no, the, the first the, scene. The, fir- uh, the first scene in, of the movie. In the movie, where you see <clears throat> the shuttle Vader's and the ship going sideways into, yeah. into the. So that's a combination of of foreground models with the matte painting. So and and so he was one of the first to to integrate that, and so uh, 
and I always had to see. I, I'm, I'm, I love painting. So I can, it's like I don't want to do that. I want, you know, I don't want to do the digital. I want to do the painting, right? And I, I it, it, and it, so there's only so far I can advance with that mindset. So, know. so on Return of the Jedi, though, like you had opportunities to help out some of your fellow people that were doing different aspects of the movie, like right. model making and right. stuff like that. Right. So you got called in to do the the second Death Star, which I've seen. I think that's one of your more famous pictures online too. Where it shows you work, yeah, you have it back there on your wall, right. where you're working on the Death and Star. Again, you How know, cool Chris, is that, Chris? And Mike, <clears throat> they didn't want to work on that. So, like you, you, you work on the Death Star. I'm going, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 Do I really have? I'm gonna put up a fight here, right? Yeah. Jeez, yeah, stop so twisting crazy. my arm. I hate and this. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> and everybody else is like, no, I, I don't want to do. I don't want to uh, write that memo. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, go paint the desert. Like, <coughs> okay. Like, <laughs> and, and, and guys, half, half of this is just, uh, I'm 24 years old. You know, I'm, I'm about my son's age. So I'm That's still crazy. I'm still looking at this like a fan. Yeah, yeah. It, to me, it's not like a real job. It's I'm like 39, and I, I'm taking like, out of all this stuff. You're it, talking it's about. like a it's like a play job. <laughs> I don't know how to paint, but I would do it. Yeah. I'd figure it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stick figure. Yeah. You're like, hey, why is there a stick figure in a Death Star? <laughs> <laughs> why is this a big printout? <laughs> and like in your mind, when you guys, I mean, you you read about. These individuals that you respect, and so I really respected uh, Ralph McQuarrie because oh. I've gotten all the fan books. I've gotten all the you know how they made Star Wars and, and Empire, and I'm seeing that Ralph McQuarrie was the guy who designed <coughs> all think, all you know, spaceships, the the, the environment imagery, yeah. as well as which they're Darth still Vader. using. They're still using yeah. that stuff today. And then to have him walk through the door and. There he is. There's Ralph McQuarrie, <laughs> and I start talking to him, and so on. Then I, and you know, I, I told him I'm I'm working on your, I'm working on on the Death Star. So I actually have his, his painting, which was in gouache, was an unbelievable uh, a painting he did of the Death Star, which is phenomenal. And so I asked him, well, you know, I'm going to be doing it. So what do you think? He goes, well, just just have fun with geometric shapes. <laughs> I went, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's all he told me. Yeah. And, and a lot of these guys, when you meet them, they're uh, they're very visual. You know, I mean, I'm a yapper, but a lot a lot of them they, they contemplators. Tend be, they tend to be introverts. <laughs> yeah. And they're and, and they're very visual in their head, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to come out in words. What what's happening? Right. You mm-hmm. know, in the brain, and. You know, my, my take on Ralph was just a sweet man, you know, a lot going on in his head. He's very introspective, uh, not necessarily a very dynamic speaker, but if he spoke, he was a little bit like Yoda. You paid attention, <laughs> you know, kind of uh, addressed in a very, uh, and you know, he made, you know, a fortune, but just addressed like a guy just coming off the street, yeah. very unpretentious, and... Uh, Truly a sweet man, and so I, I was fortunate to have met him, and so I started talking to him, and uh, I said, do, do you like working big? He goes, no, I don't want to work big anymore. And he goes, I want to work small. I like working small for something you can touch, and that made a big impact on me. And then the other thing that impressed me is George tried to you know bribe him to, to come back on for Jedi, so we'll pay you whatever you want, and he said, no. I said, I'm done. I just want to retire. And it's just something to be said about that. You know, wow. when somebody opens up the checkbook and says, you know, I want you, you know, whatever it is, we want you on here. Obviously, you know, if you, within reason, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you got $50 million, like, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, but uh, he said, no, I'm done. You know, I just want to work on things like for book illustrations and, uh, well, for you, you said you had you got the call when you were in college from Dennis Nieren, right? Uh, no, I got a call. I got a uh, call from uh, from Picrazio. Picrazio. Yeah. But I was a year out of college. You were a year out of college. Okay. So, if you don't get that call, right? Because you didn't know you were actually applying for that job. <laughs> I'd be working for you know the, the trash, <laughs> all state insurance. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's a, that's 
that's, you, it's I mean, like you're in and out burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want your fries. I was doing illustration, but I was after work. I, I was doing, but I was just. <clears throat> I, I really had a chip on my shoulder, and I, I know everything. I, yeah, because I, you know, I, I had people chew me out. You know, this is not what I asked you to do. I asked you to do this, and. So you, know, you were working for like an ad agency? Almost, I, I was or? working freelance. Freelance. Mm. So I, I, I'd done, you know, work for, you know, Knott's Berry Farm. I did some, you know, work for, you know, NBC News. And I had an agent, so she was just getting me work and, uh, you know, whatever. And so I, I was busy. And, and the biggest job I got up until that point was a job. I did a, a calendar for Coors Beer. You know, nice. So and they paid you in beer. So <laughs> yeah. yeah I, my, my, here, here was my problem. <clears throat> Uh, that was my bi- uh, first big, big job. I had to do six paintings, and they paid me twenty thousand. And and so that's a big uh, deal back then. Dang. It, it really was. And I just took the whole year off and went broke after that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> serious. I just milked it. <laughs> Didn't I, take a month awesome. off. <laughs> Let's just take I the whole year. Took a year off. That's Did so you cool. Or would, would you yeah, I went to I went to Colorado and a couple of things, but mostly just. So we traveled around Southern California, and, and then you got the and we had a pool, there. living in an apartment in a pool. So spent a lot of time by the pool, and, <laughs> and then was and I, I, you know, was like 20, 20, 23. That 20, sounds like 23. something a twenty three year old would do. do. <laughs> they just had twenty grand pop thro- dropped yeah. on their lap. Like, well, it's twenty grand now, like fifty, sixty grand. But back then, yeah. uh, probably a little, yeah. Yeah, I could live off that for a year. Yeah, for and, sure. And it's just me. No, I'm not married, you know. No kids. And, 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 you know, I have a roommate. And sometimes we meet minute rice and noodles. <laughs> I'm serious. I remember those days looking off of ramen noodles and yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. If you didn't have twenty grand in your pocket though, <laughs> yeah. the ramen noodles were probably twenty cents back then. Yeah, yeah. So they called me right around the time I was going broke. Oh, perfect time. To- <laughs> it really was. I got religion. <laughs> 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 I'm serious. I, it was, wow. like, I thought, oh God, you know, what am I going to do? This was amazing, you know. And so I. So uh, your checkbook is dwindling, and then you get the call from right. the LM. Yeah, that's amazing. That's crazy. My that's check, kismet. My checkbook's dwindling. I haven't got a call from. <laughs> 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 and, 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 uh, here's the part that was interesting. The guys across, I was staying at, uh, uh, at an office on Raymond Boulevard, just south of Colorado. And uh, the guys, there was a there was these guys on the uh, opposite hall. And they were doing all these titles for you know major TV <laughs> miniseries at that time. Okay, uh, did you guys remember Roots? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, these the guys across you know the hall did did the opening the titles for Roots where you see you see the hands holding the whole baby. The baby yeah. yeah, they did that. You know, <laughs> so we, there was all this movie action going on. So when I got the call from uh, you know from ILM, it was like wow, this is great. You know, now I'm on your level. You know, because back Actually, then... Actually, I think you're a little bit higher. <laughs> higher. <laughs> the Roots guys are bragging. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, I got you, Roots guys. Yeah, I still yeah. Remember, <laughs> I, I How about Star up. Wars, man? Yeah. yeah, I still remember the guy's name, Roger Wu. He was, he's still... I think he's still doing... He's still in the, in the movie bits. He's like... He, he was bragging for like, you know, six months. I like did that. the Roots title, I got, bitch. I got the baby with hands. You're like, yeah, I got the Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, eat that, smoke that. <laughs> I painted the Falcon, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> So you also did um, – it's so weird. I mean, look at all these movies in the 80s. It's just my – I start – the back of my head starts so tingling. So movie that you worked on, did you get screen? Did you go to a, a screening for? Oh, yeah. Like, all the premieres or just screening? Screening and parties. And I, I got so jaded by the end of you know my time there, I would give all my party invitations away. Oh, wow. You really do get jaded, you know. Uh, do you have any party invitations? <laughs> Like, no, have, I gave that one away. Right, yeah. God dang it. <laughs> yeah. I, didn't, I, I don't know what the attraction yeah, is like to that, that movie. The Goonies? Uh, the Goonies. Yeah. I think Ugh. I think it's a generational thing. Because really? like we when I watched it, uh, I was yeah, twenty. Was their age. Well that was 80, uh-huh. uh, 85. So you're talking Back to the Future, you're talking was, Goonies, was you're talking five or, I mean, five or six. Yeah. yeah. So I was like twelve. So yeah, that movie like, just shut up already. Oh <laughs> yeah, my parents watched it. They couldn't stand it because they're like, these kids are fighting too much. And I'm like, no, this is like, this it's is exactly like, this is exactly me and my friends hang out. Yeah. We're just like this. Yeah, yeah, we'd all get along really great. And the next thing you know, we're, we're fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. And hitting each other. And you know that Asian kid that's in that movie? He yeah. was he was in that movie. And he was uh, Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. I think 
he disappeared after that. Is, yeah, I kind does of he did. have any more credits? I don't know. Uh, he maybe he was in head of the class after that. I think something like that, or maybe he maybe went to maybe he went to college and became a lawyer. Or something. Chunk's a lawyer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Josh Brolin, uh, the guy. Who oh my God, brother! I mean, he's come back in a huge way. He's going to be Thanos in the Marvel movie. He's Thanos and he's Cable in Deadpool too. I mean, this yeah. that guy's famous. Yeah, wow. He's, he's made some. He's he's come pretty yeah. big. His some. mother-in-law is, uh, or not mother-in-law, mm. steps mom's uh, Barbara Streisand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, and, and you know that's like uh, that's usually the role of the dice. Like like we were talking about David Fincher. He was just in a. A camera assistant. I can't. So now I a, can't. That blows me away. He's yeah. he's a you know big time but uh, director. But you know he always had that that drive. He knew he was going to go because he was always go places. He was always doing a lot of things on the side. You know he was doing commercials. You know spot commercials that uh, just honing his craft basically. Yeah, right? and yeah. then you know his personality was su- such that he I think he made friends with. Uh, uh, Rick Springfield, so he started doing some uh, videos for Rick Springfield, and Jesse's girl, <laughs> uh, and, and then start hiring some of the guys, the moonlighting, you know, for some of the videos, and then he started doing. I think he did um, a video for the motels, and then from there, he just kind of did his thing. Uh, uh, yeah, he's and, got and that that whole genre of of uh, doing music videos lo- launched a lot of careers. Well, yeah, they don't even do music videos anymore, really, anymore. They um, do once in a while, but they get released online. I don't even know about them. Yeah, I mean, YouTube's a, YouTube's a big uh, Oh, yeah. Well, big that's the, I mean, that. Beyonce, she's doing videos all yeah, the time. Yeah, millions of hits. People, and, you know, yeah. yeah I but don't. back then, you know, they would hire animators, <clears throat> special effects. I mean... Michael Jackson made a huge production. Out of oh, yeah. Time. I remember he did the Thriller. So who did he hire? He hired, you know, Landis. Uh, Landis, right. Yeah. And so these were... these were, And I remember he also did one with... Um, uh oh, who, who's the guy? My cousin Vinny, uh, Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. He did one with Joe Pesci, and Eddie Murphy. Yeah, yeah, and, a whole bunch he, of and, and Magic Johnson. Yeah, all those, all those. Yeah, that's right. Magic Johnson. That was that whole Egyptian. Do you, uh, do, you, do you remember? I think yeah. you remember? Oh, yeah. oh, the Egyptian Magic video. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So that one used to be. It used to be a big deal back then. I mean, it, this is showing our age. Yeah. You would know when a new Michael Jackson video came out because they would world premiere it on MTV. Right. When MTV meant still music television. Yeah, right. now it's just reality now TV just crap. Reality TV crap. But, right, yeah. right. I mean, that's that's the world we live in now, right? Reality TV. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, so and, but it's all cycles. Go ahead. So you worked on Starman. To, you know, yeah. Starman doesn't get a lot of credit. Like, no, I really like that. That was Jeff Bridges. Yeah, yeah. 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 I really like that movie. The woman from uh, Indiana Jones. Uh, Karen uh, Karen Allen? Yeah, Karen she, Allen. She was the uh, Oh, was the yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was I was just thinking for whatever reason I was thinking of like Ali Sheedy, wasn't that uh that, that was, was the short circuit. Short, short circuit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was getting those like cross, but cuz that 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 was a time like 80s was a time I mean when I grew up, but I saw so many movies and I loved all of those movies. Um so Starman was was one that I really liked but Goonies of course what did you do in the Goonies what what map paintings did you do uh, or can you remember Yeah you know there's that there's that scene where the kids discover you know the uh, sure. the ship and so uh, the, the ship was on a stage I think uh, we talked about it's that before Paramount or was Universal it? One yeah, of those. we had asked you that before that was the only scene you, you the shot you did and, there Oh that's one of them and that's, then that's there's iconic. another scene where they're inside uh these kids are inside this tunnel it's like a wishing well tunnel, so oh uh, right. So they're on top, and you're they're, you're looking up the tunnel at the kids. Yeah. Tunnel. So I painted that tunnel. That hole, like outside so, of the part of the inside, tunnel. inside, the, the tunnel. inside the tunnel. Yeah. And then there's another scene <clears throat> where these kids, I think, are are kind of like on this the piano, harp scene. piano yeah. and it's and it's like a stalact. Might or slagtite that kind of the shack I don't know road, yeah. which is the one like from below slagtite oh, slagtite. I don't remember. <laughs> they're, they're kind of coming down on it, so that's a painting. Oh, cool! So I did, so, see one, two, three. I think I did three shots. That's so one, cool. One, two, three. Or, yeah, those are the three that I can remember. Because that- remember, I'm not a big fan. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> was that towards that was. That was towards the end for you, right? The yeah, race. I was getting yeah. pretty close. And my attitude back then was pretty bad. That's probably you know, you know, and I, I, you know. Frankly, when did you know? to be truthful, I only gave it like eighty percent at that point. I'm like, oh, I'm just tired of this. Yeah, I mean, when, Star when Wars. When did you know, good. like you were, you were starting to to change a little bit? Um, when did I know? 
Well, what, it, it got to be a bummer for me when we started hire when we the company started doing work for all these different motion pictures. So everybody was uh, working on different, you know, different movies. So we lost the uh, collegiality mm-hmm. of the company. And in the math department, you know, I was always fighting for getting my shot, you know, getting my image shot. Mm-hmm. So you know, competing with all the other artists, you know, to get something filmed. So there's just a lot of elbowing happening. You know, when am I, when am I going to get my shot? When are you going to, you know, when are you going to do this on time for me? So it just, I think the last two years just was a bummer. Was there you a know? movie that you really wanted to get your shot on that you never did? Uh, well, that's a good question. Well, probably by the time of in, uh, Indiana I, Jones, I would have liked to have gotten, and, and also probably for the first or or second Ewok movie, I wanted some better shots, you know. Um, yeah, and, and, and for, I had a lot of attitude back then, you know. <laughs> you know, and I just finished watching on Netflix, you know. Uh, it, 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 it's this, this team up at, uh, in Mississippi, I think it's called Last Chance U. Oh, it's the there. football, right? It's, it's a football? football thing. And you see these kids, you know, they, they've either been kicked out of, you know, uh, a D1 school for either, you know, smoking pot or, you know, yeah. smacking a girl or armed robbery. So they end up at this, you know, highly ranked, you know, junior college to, you know, it's their last chance to make it back. Yeah. Right. And you see a lot of them just have attitudes. They just, they're, they're just have <laughs> that attitudes. That was you at ILM. <laughs> that, was definitely, that was definitely me at ILM. You know, looking back at it now, I definitely had a major attitude. You were still in your twenties, I think. I was still in my twenties, yeah. but and, see that, and, and I just, and I was, I was struggling with a lot of personal issues. Yeah. So you know, talent can only take you so far. But it's different. The people around you have to kind of like you, want to work, uh, work with you. So I don't think I was the most likable and easy to work with person after, hmm. uh, after about three years after after Jedi came and went. In my mind, okay, I made my stamp. You know, I kind of made my mark, and I definitely had a big head, and I definitely just just bumped heads with the, with the guys there. You know, Chip but I was head. good enough that they you know they didn't fire me. Right, right. But <clears throat> it just there was just a lot. I had a lot of attitude, and uh, definitely your, was not the nicest person. What would your older head. self say to your younger self? Uh, just. <laughs> What's a matter of you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy yourself. This is amazing. Oh, just smack yourself and just go, come on, change it. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, you know? <laughs> uh, but, you know, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, you wouldn't change it, essentially, well, I, you know what I mean? I, I think I, I definitely would have been uh, a, a kind, kinder or, or gentler, you know? Can we just break yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. yeah. Frank's yeah. getting a delivery. Okay. Hopefully it's something for us, but I'm not sure. Sometimes I get the wrong box. You're famous, right? That's me. I knew it was you. He painted in Jedi, dude. Yeah, so that, you know. But it is what it is, you know, because uh, I see this, again, just as an analogy, last year, you see this one kid, major talent, and he's just bad mouthing the coaches, and you know what's. You know, it's on it's on video, and we're all watching. And we're going, God, it's going to hurt your chances, man. <laughs> right. And they right. can tell you're great, but you also got attitude. And there's another kid who's also great. He got no attitude. So who do you think they're going to pick? Yeah. Right, right. You know. So I came in with a lot of attitude. So it, it didn't make me the easiest person to work with. You so know? would you? You were probably the victim of your own success. You would say. Oh yeah. Or, yeah. I mean. When you start giving away your tickets for the parties, when you start uh, showing up late, yeah, when you yeah. start, so you know, I, you know, that's just life. You know? <laughs> I, just, it's, I, 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 I know, I, and that's why when I when I look at all these actors <clears throat> and actresses, you're lucky when you get a second chance. Like uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey, he's a perfect example of somebody with a lot of talent and just self destructed. Did the time? Look at him now. He's like the model citizen, right? Yeah. Not only that, but he's more richer and famous than he ever yeah. could have been. Yeah. 
And I, I would say I'm a lot happier now. I, I learned from that experience, you know. Uh, and, and in fact, that that uh, experience led me to Christ, you know, because I was a, just an atheist near the wall, you know. Mm-hmm. So by the time I became a Christian, I had also created so much bad will that, you know, it was enough to save me after Howard the <laughs> Okay, I said it. <laughs> even even Jesus couldn't help me on that one. <laughs> when, when I get to the when I get to the pearly gates, he's gonna go, hey, hey, there's only so much I could do on planet Earth. You know? <laughs> you know? Jesus saw the dailies and he's like, I, can't do <laughs> I went, I went, I went into this, you know, this insurance company to get you know insurance on my Porsche. And this guy goes, you know, I've met a lot of people. You are probably the most arrogant man, young man I've met in a long time. Can you imagine the guy selling you insurance telling you that? Yeah. Wow. An insurance guy yeah. says that. <laughs> it's like an insurance guy. Yeah. It's almost like a car salesman. Yeah, and he's a guy who says, hey, you need Jesus in your life. And I, I was like, I just. What kind of insurance was he selling? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the best insurance. For me. I'm, and, but uh, actually, yeah. That, that changed my life. I'm oh, sure. wow. The insurance guys changed your life? Yeah, the insurance guy changed my life. Because I was just, you know, I I was just getting into uh, just a lot of weird stuff, and you know, not on a bad path. And, well, you know, uh, and, he, and even with, with the women I was dating, I was like a predator. I didn't really care about them, you know. I didn't I didn't respect them. That was my mindset, you know. And so it really saved me from hurting even more women. You know, mm. I was not a model citizen. And so when everybody's telling you you're great, when you're making a lot of money. You know, I already bought my own house. Mm. You know, by the time I was 27, I was a homeowner. And uh, you could you, you can really self-destruct. So I was self-destructing. Yeah. It really was. So something like that, like you can, um, I mean, it affords you all these like luxuries, like being able to get your own home and a car and all that stuff. But at the same time, it kind of also uh, gives you kind of like this self-destruction kind of thing. Yeah. You know, like and, where you think you're the shit. You and, think like yeah, nothing can touch me. Yeah, I, I, I can do whatever I want. I'm the perfect person for that. Because what? I didn't have a good relationship with my, my parents. Mm-hmm. I didn't have a good relationship with my siblings. and So uh, nobody was there to ground you. No. I, yeah. I, everybody's down in Southern California. I'm mm. up here in Northern California. I'm on my own. And, uh, and so I, I there, there wasn't any way to go, Frank, you're stupid. Being stupid. Being an idiot, yeah. Being an idiot. <laughs> I'm serious. So you, 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 everybody kind of, that's why when you <clears> see, <throat> I, I totally understand you see these these football players and they make a lot of money and they've got their little posse guys. They, you know, part of that's important to, to have people around you that you know, hopefully, they can say, you know, you're acting the fool, man. You know, you're being. You're, but you're being, a lot of time, yeah, they're, they, they're influencing them more because that's right. because it's for them, yeah, not but necessarily you. Really for you really do need your mama or your daddy around and say, you know, you're acting the fool. Yeah, and I was acting the fool. You know, so but that's the way. That's the way it was. Was that so, insurance guy before or after Howard the Duck? Like the, when he was, when he was kind of like right a, a little bit before. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because I remember I was going through Howard the Duck, you know, and. Uh, and a lot of those people really helped me afterwards because it was like, yeah, that's it. You know, and I go, you know, whew, it was it's like a weight lifted off. I bet. Yeah, because I, I just didn't. Uh, and in fact, here's a funny little story. I, I started uh, having, doing, uh, me and another guy there started hiring models. And after work, we would, we would draw them. We would have a drawing class. We'd have, we'd invite people. You want to come up to the math department and draw from 7 o'clock to 9? Come on down. That's so, so cool. So we were all drawing. And I remember David Fincher came upstairs, and he went, Frank, what are you doing here? He said, man, you're, you're a great artist. Look at the way you paint people. Get, get, get out of here. And so already in my mind, I had mentally left. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know what I'm you're saying? You're just wasting away, essentially. And I look at it now, and it's like, <clears throat> you, you can, you're creating the environment so they, they can fire you. And that was kind of my mindset. Uh, it's like, uh. I don't, I'm not man enough to just like uh, get up and go, get up and go. They're going to have to, t- and that's kind of what happened, you know. But uh, I, I don't regret that now because I learned a, an amazing life lesson, you know. I, uh, I had too big an opinion of myself, and uh, my head got way too big. And uh, but that's life. Now, you know? did, now, didn't all these years later, didn't they come to you? When Force Awakens was being uh, yeah. well, thought of, how did well, that go? Uh, how, well, Paul Houston, <clears throat> uh, 
And he, he, he's really brilliant. He, he, he started out in the model department, but then he kind of wanted to do other things. So he got hired during a lull to, to, to help out in the math department as an assistant cameraman. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of hung around there. So he got, when digital came, he started working, you know, digital math painting. And then from there, he ended up being the head of the department you know, <laughs> because the whole math department left. Left. Literally yeah. just competed against ILM and created Matt World. So there was this void, and he filled that void. So he just gave me a call one day. He goes, Frank, do um, you want to come back and start doing digital? You know, And I really didn't because I told my wife, I go, hon, if we, okay, this is important. Okay, if, we, if I get hired, we're going to make a lot of money, but you're hardly going to see me. Mm-hmm. We're going to have to, we got this really nice house, really nice life. You know, in a town called Santa Rosa, which is, you know, Sonoma County yep. above Marin County. Yep. And we're going to have to move back there because there's no way in hell I'm going to be driving back and forth with all the oh, traffic yeah, on the road. Absolutely one. not. And uh, we moved out of Marin County because she didn't like it. And uh, we're going to have to move back there. So was, is that what you want? And, she, and so she goes, no. <laughs> so I gave a half And then you went too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I already accepted. No, I'm so kidding. I gave a half hearted interview there, and I think they could tell I really wasn't interested, but I was curious. No, of course. You, you know, got to go, you know. And so I, I'm walking in, and there's Scott Ferrari. I go, Frank, hey, good to see you. Like, what are you doing here? I go, well, I'm you know, thinking of going, doing um, you know, Force digital, Awakens. You know, yeah. digital. Uh, and he goes, Frank, you don't want to come back. You don't. It's, it's not the same. Oh, okay. And then I, I, uh, Randy Johnson, who's, who has since passed away, he, and he goes, hey, Frank, what are you doing? I go, well, you know, thinking of uh, hiring me back, going digital. He goes, you know, you don't want to come back. <laughs> they all said the same I'm thing. I'm serious. Yeah, because they, well, they knew you probably pretty well, you too, know, beyond and above that. You don't want to do this. You know, <clears> and I'm going, God, I'm here. A lot of, now, what do they think I am, you know? Yeah. But. You know, it had really changed at that point. You, it's a machine you, When now. you came in, you'd have to have your little credit card lock deal. Uh, it used to be easy going. Now there's this little beauty queen who's a receptionist, and it had a real kind of a Hollywood look. It just looked very corporate. Uh-huh. The, 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 the energy felt different. And it just didn't seem like the same laid back company. Oh no, everything's on lockdown. You can almost like thank the internet and smartphones and all that shit yeah. for that kind of stuff. And uh, do you miss any yeah. of it though? Do you miss? Do you miss the? <laughs> no, I mean, you don't miss any of it. I can honestly tell you, don't, no. because I was there for six years. I saw all the actors, had all the freedom. Uh, but, what I, about- and I, but I know what it takes. You have to. You're in that room, and it's dark. And you and you work and you, yes, you make a lot of money. Yes, you know you you get a lot of people patting you on the back, but there's there's more to life than that. There's more to life. Uh, uh, but then again, I'm I'm only saying that because I worked on something I always wanted to work on, which was Star Wars. So while we got you here, folks, we want to talk to you a little bit about Patreon.com. Uh, Patreon's a great website to help struggling artists such as ourselves to achieve. You know, our goals, which is our goals right now is just to bring you the best content and also to, you know, we love to go out and interview people. We like to travel a little bit. So we need a little bit of help. But Patreon.com will help you do that. Plus, uh, you get perks. So when you donate as little as a dollar a month to to our cause, to our little podcast, uh, you have different tiers of rewards uh, ranging anywhere from, you know, we'll draw you a stick figure or give you a shout out all the way to you know merchandise like shirts and hats and and plus we have one really cool one where you get to like drive the content and actually be on our podcast if you like so that's kind of pretty cool stuff but that is p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com patreon.com forward slash chew on this podcast we hope you guys are enjoying what we've what we've got here with frank um there's still a lot more left um but you know other than patreon i want to talk about wawa like we do all the time Wawa is this great? It's it's like Seven Eleven on steroids. It's, you don't you don't get the shitty little taquitos. Um, sorry, Seven Eleven, if you want to sponsor us. I didn't mean shitty taquitos, but <laughs> <laughs> it's this place that's strictly basically uh, in like the tri-state area uh, on the East Coast and Florida, I believe. And it, they make their fresh sandwiches. 
the best coffee that I've, you know, basically grew up with. Um, and you can get gas there too. It's cheap. It's like you either go to Wawa in New Jersey or you go to uh, Costco. So for me, yeah. it was always Wawa because I can always get a goddamn sandwich. <laughs> I'm so actually gonna, hash- you can actually get order their coffee too online, can't you? Well, I mean, a lot's changed the- since I left New Jersey. Now there's an app. Oh, cool. Okay, well, go to App Store or Android or wherever you got and, and download their app so you can order yeah. the coffee. You could you could do it. Actually, you could do it. You So when I went back to Jersey, I downloaded the app for, you know, the 10 days I was there. And I actually, you know, would order sandwiches to the specific Wawa I was going to. So I could it would just be ready when I was there. That's sick. Yeah, so I could pay we, for it. Yeah. Yeah, pay for it on my phone and then drive to the Wawa and it's ready for you to pick up. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we need a Wawa, man. Hashtag. So, what's the hashtag again? The hashtag is hashtag West Coast Wawa. Um, tweet it out. Uh, we've been trying to get Wawa to come out to the California area for like eight, almost a year months. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. So, so again, hashtag Wawa. Enjoy the rest of this podcast with Frank. There's so much more stuff he's going to talk about. And as you know. As a 60-year-old man now, I'm going, man, I, I fulfilled a, 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 a dream and I fulfilled that and I accomplished that, but I never wanted to stay there. It was never in my mind, I want now uh, the opportunity to have a life in special effects. It just wasn't me. Right. I, like, I, as soon as Jedi was done, you could have just walked away. You'd be like, oh, cool, I did it. Yeah. You know? I, I didn't have enough money to walk away. <clears throat> right. <laughs> this is always, what you're seeing here is what I've always yeah. wanted to do. I want, I, I've... I, I cashed in more on the side of freedom, but on the side of money. Because if I right, because then I had another opportunity. I had a friend of mine a call him. Goes, hey, um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if it was Sony Entertainment or Dream, it was DreamWorks. You know, they're looking, they're, they're looking for map painters they can train. At that time, they were working on Volcano a movie. Oh, and, oh, and if you good want, thing you didn't do that. You know, the job is yours. You want to come down here. And and do that. And I remember having the same talk with my wife. If we do that, honey, we got to move to L.A. Right. And I don't want to move to L.A. No. But if we want it, honey, we're going to make a lot of money because this is right now groundbreaking. And again, we both made the decision that we didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. So we literally did walk away from it. And we have, as a result, we have two healthy, you know, grown-up boys who oh, are awesome. very stable, very happy. You know, we... We gave them a lot of attention, so that's that's our product, right? Right. right. You know? and so we didn't sacrifice them. I didn't sacrifice them on my career. So I designed my life. So I built a studio, you know, in Santa Rosa, and and, and able to you know play catch with my boys. Everything you, Norman Rockwell, I did with my kids. <laughs> you know? I'm serious. That's awesome. I had that kind of lifestyle with them, and it's very and important. Of course, you know, the money from Lucasville afforded me to buy a house and. So uh, George Lucas has been very, very good to me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so now I, I, I probably don't make as much money as some of those other guys, but I'm a lot happier. Oh, you I, don't have I live, deadlines I, and I, I, yeah, stress. I, I, I live close to work. I don't have to deal with freeways. Oh, I grew up in L.A., you know, going to USC. You know, oh, from, wow. Yeah, and, and being stuck on, you know, Santa Monica Freeway, which is <laughs> hell. You know. <laughs> Oh. You can see the school from your house, but it takes an hour to get there. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it was hell. So, um, well, this is a really quaint town. I mean, it's oh, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's super cool, and you're really close to some some of the bigger, you know, like a bigger city yeah, or well, bigger people, I, I have things if you need to. The gallery, go. You know, I moved away years ago, and I'm back here, and now I know why people think this is so special. You know, uh, think about it. I have this. Knock on wood. I've got this computer right here by the window. Nobody's ever broken in in seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and I have people going, hey, "Dude, what are you doing?" <laughs> I'm serious. It's a, it, it, we have a uh, we have a high school here that has an open campus. Kids are respectful. I've yeah, that's had, that's we've awesome. Never had, we've never had a problem with the high school kids, and they're you know walking up and down during you know when school opens and. It's a great, com- it's a really, a great really community. nice community. At first, why kids go? Well, why did you bring us up here? And now they go, Dad, I'm thankful you brought the plaster high. And, you know, right, right. It's all really good. So, <clears throat> no, I don't regret it at all. I because I, I really had a great time when I was there. I met some quality people, still friends with a lot. At that forty three union, 
the the people that I was friends with back then, we were still friends and friendly. The people that were still idiots towards me, they were still idiots towards me. Yeah, it's just like going back to high school it, reunion, it really essentially. Was. <laughs> you know, it was like, oh, hi. Hi, Frank. Okay, bye. As opposed to, hey, Frank, what's going on? Yeah, you know, like when, yeah. I, when I saw Bill George, you know, I got this really nice email from Bill. He said, hey, seeing you was like the highlight, Frank. You know, anytime, That's so cool. anytime you're, you know, at ILM, give me a call. Let's have lunch. I'll give you a tour anytime you want. Bring those podcasters. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, that's amazing. You know, well, that's, what, that's, that's good. That's that's good people. That's what yeah. We, that's the other thing we wanted to talk about. We want to talk about your other movies, but we also want to talk about that fortieth because uh, talk about a talk about a, a priceless ticket to go to a party. I mean, I was watching. We we both were watching some of your videos, just completely jealous of just watching. Like, I mean, I remember the one video where you went in and you were filming um, where you used to work. I mean, like, here's where I painted the star, and it was you know it's all run down now. Yeah. But, I, I would I would be happy. I know both of us would be happy to see a rundown warehouse. It, 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 it was very know. nonchalant. It was very just like, oh, this is where we're. This is cool. And I'm just like drooling. I'm like, oh, like, oh my god, that's where yeah. the magic was made. There's you nothing know? there. There's like, nothing there. Yeah. Wood and we're just, oh my god. That's <laughs> And everybody there had like a little station. You go, you go in there, going, "Oh yeah, he's yeah, he's working on on uh, Darth v- uh, Vader shuttle. Oh yeah, he's working on on, on some of the X wings. I mean, it was amazing." And it, and the place, <sighs> I had a friend of mine going, "What did you call it? A dump?" He says, "It's just a business park. It's a big garage. Uh, they, it is a big garage." <laughs> and in my mind, yeah. see, having seen Star Wars, Empire. I just fancy that these guys had a, had a nicer place. The right. place I visualize is the place they're working at not now. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. Presid- That's what I thought. These guys like have, beautiful like studios these beautiful and studio, it, right, yeah. right. And it was. <clears throat> it was not. It was nothing. <laughs> it really was nothing. I love that grassroots shit, though. I, mean, I, know. I just love you know and, popsicle sticks and this and so to the do time, this. You know, yeah. I, I went back. That's when they kind of cleaned their act up together. There's nice facades. The buildings were nicer, carpeted, air conditioning. The model and, makers are wearing ties. Yeah, You're like, what are you doing? Yeah, and, all had, <laughs> and, and then you walk around. It was like walking in like a little museum. They had, they had, they had Don't made, touch anything. They had made everything, you know, models in, in, enclosed in plexiglass. <laughs> and I'm serious. So it was. Back then that stuff was just laying around, right? They didn't give yeah. a shit. They're like, I oh, just throw it in the garbage. You're like, no. Next don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just gathering, <clears throat> just, just gathering dust. And so the paintings were haphazardly put up on the wall. I mean, we're talking haphazardly. Mm-hmm. And then by like, the time like this is like movie history, and they're just throwing that shit up like a yeah. college kid would put up. And, a so, and, by, <laughs> and so by the time staple I, it to I the came wall, back, you, you could just tell no. Somebody said no. Let's make this look like it's a you know it's a work of art, state of the art. You know, well it should be. I yeah. mean, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, oh is, my gosh. I mean, God, to, to just right. walk in there and just look at that when stuff. when Lucas opens that museum, I'm gonna be one of the first people to walk in there because I'm dying to see that collection. You know. Especially the Star Wars memorabilia. It's going to be incredible. It's amazing incredible. That he held on to all that after he sold the company. He still has a lot of the models mm. and, and all, all the map paintings. That wasn't part of the deal. And wow. Of course, and, of course, uh, Disney wasn't interested in those. They're interested in, we want to do a Star Wars every year, which they're doing now. Right. Yeah. It's a ching you know? It's, 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 Big it's, time. It's a, it's a cash cow. So what what other any any great stories that you can tell us about that you didn't weren't able to film on the on the fortieth uh, party? Any good uh, any good stories coming out of that party? Uh, you know we're all kind of geriatric now. <laughs> that's a good that's a good story. I, there were some people I didn't recognize. It's like wow, nature has not been very kind to you. <laughs> but I think what I saw. Uh, good example. You know, I wa- I walked up to Scott Farrar. Do you, you know who he is? Uh, yeah, no, Scott Farrar is the effects guy for all for all the Transformers. Oh, he okay. he he is Michael Bay's right hand man. Now, see, I'm like you. I didn't know that. So I, he goes, Scott, you Frank, how you doing? Blah, blah blah. So I go, What are you doing now? He goes, Hey, hey I'm the, I'm big time. He's joking with me because I you know I know him. He goes, hey, What do you mean? He goes, Yeah, you heard of Transformers? I go, Yeah. He goes, well. You know, I'm Michael Bay's right hand man. I like to talk to that guy. <laughs> That'd be like my exit interview with Toby on The Office. Like, who do you think you are? <laughs> like, why? Yeah, it's kind of, it's like Cornell. 
Uh, have you heard of it? You know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. He's like Andy too. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a big deal. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. So he was telling. He was going. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, in fact, next week it will probably be the opening to the new Transformers. And you know, I'm. I'm sure he's a very rich man. I oh mean, yeah. Holy I, shit. He's a likable. And, and uh, so afterwards, uh, me and my wife spent a lot of time with he and his wife and. Uh, He's like, yeah, Frank, uh, so great to see you. If you were down there, give me a call. And that's, that's my thing here. The people who are quality, nice people, they remain quality, they nice, nice people. people. The people that have an edge to them back then, uh, from what I saw, still have an edge to them. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, I like Phil Tippett, but he's kind of an edgy he's guy. A he's a curmudgeon. He's a curmudgeon. He was, it's all a curmudgeon, he was but... a curmudgeon then. He's still a curmudgeon now. You know? I liked his speech, though. I was... It was pretty cool yeah, when we went up there yeah. and talked. But that's him. And yeah. he's saying, you know, these guys, now these young guys, they don't know what the hell they're doing. But he's <laughs> coming, he's old school. He's coming from having all that history, being there when it's being made. And he knows how to do it. And a lot of these young guys just don't respect that anymore. You're yeah. really dealing with these millennials. They're they're coming from a totally different mindset. You know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's a corporate machine, though, too. I mean, they yeah, churn really, out, they just it, churn out, yeah. And that's why somebody like me, older, if once you have all that freedom, do you now want to be a, a little, Const- a little gear constricted, right? Yeah, do you if you can come and go and now, no, now you gotta sign in, sign out. We had kind of that. Nobody paid attention to it. Nobody, hey, Frank, sign in, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Well, nowadays, nobody was standing in. Out by your car and trying to get like uh, behind the scenes stuff from you, right? <laughs> yeah, that's how it is now. It's like, now oh, yeah, signing a, you know, a non disclosure agreement because everybody wants to know what is going on. Meaning, like, if you were working on, you know, the new, the last Jedi that's coming out in December, yeah, and you, everybody's a little bit paranoid. I mean, I, yeah. I, I went up to, you know, uh, Joe, hey, Joe, how you doing? And, and, um, I, I want him to sign, you know, the photograph that's behind here, yeah, you know, the first thing he says, uh, this is not going on eBay, is it, Frank? And I can already tell I put him in a sour mood. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I go, no, this is for me. He goes, well, I better not be on eBay. Like, no, it's for me. You know? <laughs> That's probably it, happened in the past, though, well, too. Well, the internet has changed everything now. You yeah. Because, you know, 20 years ago, if you asked him that, he would have never even thought about that. Yeah. He would have just thought, oh, it's just for him. Right. Nowadays, it's yeah. like, well, how can I put this on the internet and, and be the first yeah. person to break some kind of news? I mean, because like uh, the person that you just mentioned that working on Transformers, you Scott Farrar. Yeah, he somebody would have probably went up to him and asked him about the movie. Not us, but you know, somebody, <laughs> somebody would have been like you know, give me some tidbit in the movie, and then next thing you know, it's like yeah. on comicbook dot com and you know, breaking news. You yeah, know, this person says this about the movie. The, the internet's changed everything. Right, with that stuff, and you know. Um, you had told us a story about JJ before. I mean, he is notorious for how secretive he is mm-hmm. in his movies. I mean, basically, they would ruin your life if you let out some little tiny thing. A leak? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. They had drones flying over Force Awakens set to take, that took pictures of the Falcon and all that. So they were so mad. But it's like, that's what the world we live in now. Yeah. Right. You know? I mean, Disney owns everything, but they don't own the air. They don't own the air. Not yeah. Yet. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, uh, when when you go to these reunions, I'll, I mean, a lot of us were there, and and most uh, uh, I don't really keep up with it too much. That's mm-hmm. why when Scott was like, "Well, don't you know I'm working on trying?" No, yeah, you're like, really. good for you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking hate those yeah. movies, but good job. <laughs> yeah. I would say most of us just talk on, on a very personal level. How you doing? You got any kids? Are they married? Yeah. You know, uh, you're still with your wife. You know? <laughs> Who's this you're with now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's you know, hot. Yeah, you know, uh, where are you living now? Uh, you got grandchildren. You're talking to people on that level. Because yeah, you've yeah. already, you've, it's like guys from World War II. You're not talking about, you know, seeing the tragedies. You know? Right, you, right. You, you talk, uh, and, and so most of it was, was like that. You know, the only people that would hold court were those who were even holding court back then. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Look what I, and I'm look what I drop, do. I'm not going to drop any names, but you could just tell, oh, yeah, these guys yeah. are still full of it. They're <laughs> full of it then, and they're still full of it now. And, and I can't, you know, your people aren't going to change. Yeah. But the quality people that I thought were quality still remain quality. And you just go up to them and you just start talking. And they just like people. Nice. You know. I'm going to give some but, of those guys the number to your insurance agent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there's, and, and in fact, there was a lot of people that I thought weren't there, were there, but they'd, 
they look so different. They so drastically changed. I just didn't recognize them. Yeah. Because then when I'm looking at the group group photograph, which I sh- still hasn't, I still haven't downloaded. You know, <laughs> I didn't download them. Uh, there's all these people going, "Oh, there she is," or "There he is," and I just didn't recognize it. They aged so tremendously. You know, where they're oh, one yeah. time they had a huge crop of hair, now they've got they're almost they're bald. bald. <laughs> or they're very wrinkled. Uh, I mean, it's jarring. If yeah, you see people yeah. In a while, I mean, jarring. It's like wow. Well, it's probably like twenty years, right? Twenty thirty. Four, years. Well, thirty five years since Jedi. Oh, yeah, I mean, almost. Yeah, so. thirty years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it, 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 believe me, it, it wasn't. You know, there was the, the only thing that people told me that, and I believe it, is when Marsha was there. They, they, she was only there because George wasn't there. And from what some couple people told me, if, uh, they were able to open up more, especially during that little speech. Yeah, right, right, right. they were able to segment. kind of say more. They were, they were able to say more because George wasn't there. And so I had a lot of people say if he was there, they would have been more tight-lipped. Just Yeah, he doesn't own shit because anymore. Because they're afraid of him, you know? <laughs> he right. doesn't own anything yeah. anymore. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, but still. Can, yeah, he's, he's still a whole sway, you know. Right. And so uh, it... A lot, a lot of people were freer. A lot of people gave Marshall a lot of love. You know, yeah, she was she was tearing up because he, he's literally written her out of the books, and like David Pross. Yeah, yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. And so it was good to see her there. And I hardly did, didn't recognize her because she's aged a little bit. And I just remember her just being just full of life and vivacious. You know, she's an older woman now, so she was just a little bit more sedate <laughs> and quiet. So. It, that was a little jarring for me to see that. So, uh, it sounds like it was, it was like, a good time. It, it was, sounded like like you, you were was, glad you went. Yeah, yeah. By the time I, it was supposed to, it, it, it was. I think it started from six to, to ten. I didn't didn't leave till close to eleven because <laughs> we were just talking to people and just how Catching you doing? Up. What are you up right. to? And you know, and, and, and nothing like tell me what you're doing now and how. And nothing like that. It's just how you're that's doing, cool, how's your man. Children, yeah. you know, and. Just personable stuff, you know. When you really care about somebody, it's like, yeah, how are you doing? You're working on your unlike, house. Unlike us, if we were your guests, that would have been bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was really good, you know. And you know, it was it was a great. Your the your your wife going there. She you met her after all the hoopla, like after you had left Thailand, right? Uh. Or, yes. So, yeah. what was her take on this whole? Like, does she have a, does she have an idea of how crazy and how big you know of I'm, what I'm, you were part I'm, of? Man, that's a great question. Because my my wife go do the dishes. You know, <laughs> not, not I don't give a shit who you are. Brought their wives, yeah. you know, and I just made you know uh, wanted to bring her, and she kept squeezing me, and she's she's going, "Wow, Frank, you were really a part of something really big." That's so cool. Because she's looking at it from the outside, she right? Because she she didn't know you back then. No, so. and she's going, "Wow, Frank, this is really." really big i'm so proud of you you know and that kind of gave me goosebumps because she was like she's seeing it from an outsider because yeah. i'm because i'm standing next to uh uh dutra you know remember first special effects guy oscar you know is that his name dykstra dykstra, dykstra. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's there was randy dutra who was in a uh, creature department and uh, dykstra so dykstra uh, during the uh the group photo, you know, he's got his Oscar and, 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 and right there. <laughs> he's you know? that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Remember this? Yeah. He brought his college sweater jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he did. I, and I, I said, where do you hear at ILM? You know, and he goes, no. He's grumpy. And I go, didn't, you, didn't I see you here? And he goes, no. I went, okay, this guy is not too friendly. <laughs> so can I take a picture of you with your Oscar? Okay. That was, that was about my conversation with him. Wow. You know? yeah. A grump. But, you know, uh, at, 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 that's, that's life, right? <laughs> but your wife knew. So she, my wife has seen all this. <clears throat> but, she, but she knew that you were part of Jedi right. and all, all those other movies. But she, I guess she didn't have an idea until she what was, that was like. in it. Right. And but you're going to you go to these conventions and stuff. She still has. She didn't like have a. Yeah, I don't go to. You know, I. I don't know if I'm going to go to any more of them. Just, I don't know. It's just, <laughs> it's not really my thing. You right. know, now 
Because there's, I mean, there's guys who really, you know, really, you know, make that a career. Uh, or, or part of not the career that's a, that's the wrong term. it's kind of the way of like kind of still staying within it a little bit like it's like staying past your time almost right. but i mean for some people but other people you know i mean i'll the, do this here because i like you guys yeah exactly but, but yeah no, 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 right I really, I, I need yeah quality but it's just <clears throat> i don't want to be one of those guys who hangs on because you know this was something i'm known for and this is how how uh, I, I get attention. I don't need that. Right. I really don't. Well, we were talking to you before. And, and the you... reason I have some of the Star Wars stuff up is because I've had so many people. People go, ask you about Frank, why is your Star Wars? Uh... It, it took a while before I put this up. <laughs> He's like Alec Guinness. He's like, fuck Star Wars. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's not me. It's not everything that I am. But Star Wars at Hamlet? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Down at the local high school. Harrison Ford's Her... like, I was in the end of Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heard of Shakespeare? I was in the... I did that. But, um, but you were telling us before, you're, you're like, if I painted Star Wars paintings, I'd be a gajillionaire. But that's not your thing. Like, you're like, I'm not, I don't, you know, that's not everything that I am. Yeah. I, I love doing what I'm doing. But yeah, I mean, you could easily, I'm telling you, Frank, you can easily have- go to those conventions. You can make a shit ton of money. Yeah. Not, no joke. We go there. We've been to the Star Wars celebration. They had an artist corner where people were just selling portraits left and right of Vader and this guy and yeah. the, and Neon Numb and all this bullshit. Yeah, these guys aren't. These guys didn't work. On they didn't the work on the film. But imagine a, a man who actually worked on the film painting right. these things. It's like has this huge nostalgia about right. it. But yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 my, uh, this gallery said, Frank, if you do the Star Wars stuff, you're probably gonna make a ton of money. Oh, man, I'm saying I just it's like do, I just. I'm just not interested in it. But yeah. see, in a way, like to me, that's very. It feels very and it doesn't even see, I, humbling. It, no, no. I mean, to me, it's like I, I really respect that. It. It's like if you were like you know what Barry Sanders was like one of the ultimate you know running backs, and right. people were saying, why don't you fucking leave Detroit, go to the Niners, go somewhere where you're going to win a Super Bowl? That's that wasn't his yeah. thing. He's like, I just I love the game and I love where I'm at and I love what I'm doing and I don't need that stuff. You know, it's like, this is, I mean, this gallery is amazing. I love everything that you do. And I feel like this is what you want to do. This is where you're happy. So, I mean, kudos, man. It's like, but still, I would, if I saw you at a convention with some portraits, I'd, I'd freak out. I'd be like, I'm buying that. (laughs) Just to let you know. (laughs) And and, and, uh, the market, the the market is there. And, um, and it it goes back to, you know, you know, can you live with yourself? You know, and I don't. I don't think I could live with myself. I, well, I don't want to get too deep there, but I'm just not interested in it. Right. I just. Well, not, uh, I mean, if I, I, I just. It's just, do you have people commission Star Wars work? Though I'm just a question. I mean, do, does people call you up and say, "Hey, man, can you?" Me as a, a Jedi. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I mean uh, there's a friend of mine who does that really well. You know, Mark Rates. I never heard. Of yeah, no. he's he's doing pretty well. <clears throat> I mean, he's he's he does a lot of movie posters, and mm. he does you know he's always at the celebrations, and he just you know does these beautiful drawings of you know Princess Leia or you know That's Han cool. Solo, all that, and he he's I'm sure he's making a ton of money doing that, and he's just you know. But if he's happy, I mean, he's he, happy like, he, he loves, that's his niche. He you know, loves niche. doing it, you know. Yeah. So I see that, and I go, you see, I good job, man. He's happy doing it, you know. But he's. He's an artist outside of the bubble, you know, and so um, it's just not yeah, me, you yeah. know. It's just, uh, but did you see the what was that movie? Uh, uh, it was that uh, Star Trek spinoff, Star Quest or something? Galaxy like? Quest. Galaxy, Galaxy Quest. Quest yeah. Where uh, where it's Rickman? He's like, oh, do I have to go? I could and, say this line again. Say, uh, yeah, if that, I have to say this one more time, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Say it, say it. You yeah, know? If I and, grab the arse and, hammer, huh? and, and, and afterwards you're just getting smashed. It's like, oh. This is the only way I can make money just doing these conventions, you know. And there's a part of me that goes, oh, that's, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we make a ton of money now. Here's, here's but it's not here's worth a, my a thousand Darth Vader painting. <laughs> right. Just, like, Selling just, your soul, essentially. You know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. But, you know, it's just not me, you know. I mean, I love doing what I do. Yeah, well, I mean, you're very, and, and, and very good and at it. There's nothing more gratifying knowing. See, in my mind, 
See, I'm I'm piggybacking off of George Lucas, <laughs> and I'm just profiting from his creation. Mm. Okay, right. And that's, Ralph McQuarrie. And Ralph McQuarrie. Yeah, you know, yeah. to, to to me, that's kind of whorish in my mind. <laughs> no, that's no, just that me. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, if you created a character from scratch, let's say, right? Maybe that would be something where exactly you're right. proud of that character and you yeah, created I, I it. Yeah, I would take that to the bank. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, in fact, there's there's a guy that I paint here in town. He's a cowboy guy. I just paint him over and over and over again. And I sell all his paintings, and he's like, "Man, you're, you know, I want a percentage now of all the paintings you've sold of me." me. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, you're selling those paintings to other people? Yes. Oh, wow. You know, <laughs> he's so, John Wayne. Yeah, and so, so cool. Uh, so I've created this 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 image uh, of him that people like, and so. Uh, but that's just me. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. It really makes, makes sense. So. And just about anything in life. I mean, about anything in life is like that. Um, okay, so beside uh, map paintings and, and, and portraits and things like that, um, I noticed, for whatever reason, on the IMD page, they have like a, a, a section called Art Department, and it said that you did like uh, packaging – like you've done like illustrations on packaging, like you know, Sim Life is what I have right here, uh-huh. the game Sim Life. So you did like the the actual software box yeah. packaging. Uh-huh. Beside, where'd, you find, where'd you find that, dude? I'm, t- I'm telling you, we were yeah, driving, yeah. we were driving over here, and I typed in your name and IMDb just to kind of refamiliarize ourselves with you. But I, but there was <laughs> one, Jeez, the, yeah, yeah. But there was an illustration like well, I link, a, and I, see, I, I clicked I did, on that, and I, I was did, like, uh, Star uh, Star Wars the Vitamins. What, oh, the packaging for that? Yeah, hold on. Oh, oh stop. <laughs> no way. Pro- I probably had those as a kid, too. I almost guarantee. Holy shit. I, I, I'm i telling you right now, I've had that. Yeah. I've I, had that exact ball. You know who their competition was? The Flintstones. The Flintstones, yeah. And so you painted R2-D2 and C-3-Bro yeah. on those? Yeah. That, dude, I, <laughs> I have, know I've owned that many, many times. The Flintstones, but see now, don't they make? Didn't the Flintstone vitamins and Star Wars like mesh at one Probably. point? And like, but, yeah, because they have their own gummy. Yeah, like their, their pitch, their pitch was this is this stuff is more healthier than a Flintstone, blah blah. It's but got the force is bullshit. But guess what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Many <Mini-chlorians. laughs> Yeah. But it was like a five dollar difference, and if you're you know mom and pop, it's like okay. Is, You're going to buy the cheaper brand. Yeah. yeah this, Just because it has Star Wars on it. Oh, yeah. no. My parents were like, okay, I'll get you the Star Wars Band-Aids, even though they're like $3 more. Yeah. They do the same shit. <laughs> Just because it has Star Wars yeah. on it. That is too funny, man. Yeah, that that brings back some memories, so, I tell you what. You did. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool, you whore. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, I was an illustrator. So, uh, uh, Slut! Yeah. 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 I got a goddamn Death Star thing. You didn't fight it. Beat me a Darth Vader, goddamn it. We're all ha- healthy. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. That's how, that's how you. That's how you. I saw my insurance Draw agent. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally. I saw my insurance agent the very next day, and that was the end of it. <laughs> no more vitamins. That's how you were able to sleep at night. That's, that's how you. That's how you it's better for kids at five dollars more. <laughs> and I don't get a percentage of that. George does. Yeah, yeah. No. I'm, I'm, I'm get myself your, out I, of this one now. I, I, I technically, I've had your vitamins. Bust it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've eaten your product. Uh, so, so you did. <laughs> so yeah, because I love, I love SimCity. I had those games uh, as a kid as well, but. Sim did, life. That's too funny. Into, how did you get it? Was it was it your agent that got you into the the, the video game yeah, cover? I, or? I I I did an ad. A lot, a lot of illustrators have an ad in a workbook, and uh, the agency called me up and. So we want you to draw a T Rex on. Yeah, we, well, at that time, Sim, they would morph different animals into different other reptilians, right. and, and so. Uh, oh so yeah. Did you like doing that kind of stuff? I love doing that kind of stuff. That's a ti- <coughs> tiger. So going the, back into the, um, oh. illustration. Yeah, illustration. For it's like all cover. gone digital. <laughs> Even everything's gone digital. Even like book covers. And I things remember. Things. I remember when writing was on the wall. When I, I got a big, big job for a, a company in New York, and then I and, and then she goes, "Okay, now do this on this layer and this layer." And I go, oh, "Wait, I'm, what's a layer?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, Photoshop, I, I dude. I didn't know about it, so I said, well, no, I'm not digital. I, I'm uh, traditional. She goes, oh, pregnant, pause over the phone. I thought you were digital. I go, no, I do everything representation. So how are you going to email me a I painting? said, I can, I can photograph all these things on separate, and you guys can. She goes, no, 
No, well, we're going to have to kind of go a different direction. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's when I realized, you know, the yeah, writing it's over. Wall. Yeah, and so I made a conscious at, at that point, you know, the a direction. I'm either going to go digital, or I'm going to do my dream, which is have a gallery and sell my art. And I, I'm I think you I, went the right way. I'm morphed in here, and I'm, you know, I've been happy ever since. More happy. Because uh, I, I meet people, I do a lot of, tra- uh, I probably do more traveling than when I did at ILM. Do you call the shots, and, dude? Yeah, and um, who's your boss besides yeah. your wife? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and I'm happy, you know, and uh, I'm keeping it going. I'm making, a living, I'm making a living at it, you know, and right, so. Right. Uh, we're happy. We're content. I think that's so funny that those people will be drove. So we're at, did we mention we're at Frank's Gallery? We're yeah, recording yeah. in here? Okay. Yeah, yeah. But it was kind of cool. Like we came in and he was talking to a couple people. So we kind of stood off to the side. And and uh, so they bought something. That's yeah. that's pretty cool. Do you have a lot of foot traffic? They just come in and just buy stuff on a whim? or? Yeah. I, uh, my best customers are customers from the Bay Area. Oh, Because yeah. they usually have a lot more money. And they will buy on the spot. That's you know, amazing. That's awesome. And we're a little bit. Do people know who you are in this neighborhood? Oh yeah. So they know they're, they're the, the, the Star the, the Wars guy. Yeah. Star yeah. Wars guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I usually get this, which bugs the crap out of me. You know, we've been by your gallery many times, and you're never there. And I've always <laughs> wanted to meet you. So I'm going. I'm usually during here, but the, you know. It, when are you it, coming? It, yeah. yeah I, well, I'm close. Eight on in Sundays, the morning on Sunday. I'm, I'm pretty much gone after five o'clock. So yeah. If, if, um, I'm, um, or I'm traveling. I'll right. be I'll be in Santa Fe next month. And does, uh, does someone run the gallery while you're no. gone? Oh, okay. Uh, is, well, is... I'll have my uh, my wife kind of come in if if I know it's going to be a busy weekend for something. I say, why don't you why don't you go there and, and, and check it out? You know. Yeah. But uh, so the, and, and this besides being okay. your gallery, this is actually the 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 place where you paint oh, the yeah. most or all the time or yeah. I have people go. You, you just do everything right here. You go. Yeah, just do it right here. I, I, I don't need a a fancy easel, and I just have a good time. I got my my music cranked up. I'm serious. <laughs> Do people walk in in the middle of your work, and they're like, "Dude, dude," and you're like, "Oh yeah." You're like, "Just I hang to, on." And if I have to talk, I'm painting this I rock. Gotta, I gotta turn the music down. <laughs> I'm serious. I have the music, and it was I, I, in some ways I recreated when we worked at I, at ILM. <laughs> I bet you it was so, noisy like crazy there. Big Groucho, you know, he just loved having music loud. So you know, we brought in a turntable, and that time it was a a records. <laughs> Eight tracks. And it, shit. Wasn't, it, it wasn't because it wasn't you know CDs or cassettes right, or no. uh, and we we just had the music playing loud and we're painting. And so wait, now subconsciously, we're the only depart- subconsciously you're back at out of them. Well, that's one thing I really missed. I missed us kind of working and talking and arguing and talking. That's and funny because like that's... and people would come up to our department because we were the only ones that have loud music. We go to the other departments and they're all quiet. Working hard. <laughs> well, we're talking, but it's yeah. everything is controlled and you go to the animation right. and those guys are dark. <laughs> Dark as they're, you know, they're yeah, because you have to be able to dark. see. And, and then, of course, you go in, into you know the stage where they're shooting the models, and that's all dark and controlled. Then you come into the math department. And you're out of control. <laughs> it's messy, and music's loud, and we're arguing, we're laughing, and then people are going, holy cow, what's going on here? You know? So I'm kind of the same way. I got the music going, it's loud. I got wine here. I serve, I serve my clients wine. You know, sometimes so cool. we got some bourbon. And, oh, bourbon, um, you're speaking a, my language it, now. I know. It's, uh, I wish I had some here. <laughs> you just come in and have a bourbon and watch Frank paint. That'd be and, awesome. And, and it's a party, and it's fun. And uh, only time it's annoying is when I'm working, and, and the guys, it's kind of... It, you're in the like, zone. It's, and in the zone. It's a barbershop, and people start talking. And so I, But I made it so it's like a hangout. You know, they can sit, I love that. Sit there and there yeah. and start talking. Right, and, right. Like yesterday, you know, these people come in. I have to kind of shush them down. Like, okay, they're in here for my business here. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's yeah. the only time where I have to kind of tell them, you know, hey, okay, you now, yeah, yeah. they're my, my business. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, here for business. It's not cheers today. Yeah. But they, Settle down, Norm. Yeah, I do have to tell them, oh, now this is my business. <laughs> and they'll want to talk to them, and I kind of give them the eye, like, you're like, yeah, I'm you trying know. to sell this guy. I'm trying to sell. Like, Come on, man. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, Let's go across the street. So get a donut. That's the only time where it can be a little uncomfortable. And it's usually my friends saying, now this is business. 
Yeah. <laughs> They're all cursing. Yeah. It's like, dude. Like, yeah. They drink the bourbon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're all getting hammered in the and corner. And that's happened. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm, only like, I'm only 40 minutes from you. Really? Yeah, I'm only 40, 40, 45 minutes less than that, depending on traffic. Well, you're coming down from Reading. Oh, right? yeah. So I'm like three hours away. Okay, wow. Well, I appreciate that. Well, yeah. That's why I had to get you guys some coffee. You want some wine? Got some wine. That, that, <laughs> no, I could. He's got to drive. <laughs> oh, you, I got to go pick up my wife and head home oh, after okay. this. Yeah. But oh, uh, You're so close. I'm thinking if there's a day that I don't have the kids, I'm going to come hang out and drink bourbon with you. There you go. Oh, you like, need hey, to Frank, do that. are you busy You know, today? Yeah, just painting. I'm gonna bring a bottle of bourbon. Let's let's drink. Yeah. <laughs> After it, uh, in fact, there's a, a buddy of mine he emailed me. Frank, I came by. I brought. I got had some bourbon. You're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Text him back. Uh, don't open it. He goes, I will. I keep it yeah, sealed. Yeah. <laughs> but I I, 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 I I like bourbon. Yeah, yeah bourbon's that's awesome. My, uh, yeah, bur- bourbon's one of the things that that's I like so mad, man. Awesome. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I like bourbon everything. Like the beer that I drink is usually bourbon barreled type stuff. That's yeah. how much I like bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> my beer has to be bourbon yeah. barreled. Yeah. <laughs> I like my wine. Snob. Does it taste like bourbon? Yeah. <laughs> Does it taste like bourbon? I want it. I want it. <laughs> well, Frank, man, I, I, we really appreciate this. And, and after, I guess, we hang up the, the mic, I want to really, really take a look around. But yeah, uh, yeah, Let's go get lunch or something, too. Yeah, yeah if busy. you're hungry. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I had a uh, – actually – my son had a, a housewarming, got married. You know, beautiful. Oh, yeah, I saw the pictures. Yeah, it was so wonderful. Beautiful Russian girl, and they just have a lot of people who just couldn't do it, so they just said, you know, let's let's push it uh, in in the August for the housewarming. Oh, that's so, great. Uh, that's why it was ten to two. You know. Oh right. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, well, weddings so, take up so much time and honeymoon and all that. So this yeah. is nice. So it's going to be a nice little yeah, so get I together. Have, I don't have anywhere to go now. So. <laughs> No, let's oh, that's, that's, that's the other thing. A follow-up question, really quickly, before we end this. I, I had mentioned your, you know, your wife didn't wasn't really part of that when when you were at ILM. What about your kids? I, I know you, we met your once, and I, his name escapes me. We, we met him at the expo. He he kind of, I think he kind of understands like when, the when, gravity of it. Yeah, yeah. Both your kids understand what you were part of. Oh yeah, yeah. They and uh, are they part of that? They do. Are they part of that? nerd them too that are they into that stuff as well Well, yes yes no and i think uh i think my son david is the one who's really into it you know is that the son that we met yes okay you know because he has some you know physical disabilities he's super so a lot of my friends have been cool about it so like a pixar we've I've taken both my boys over to pixar and so they got the grand treatment there oh my gosh and uh you know, when I go to, uh, I mean, I'd love to bring you guys, but when I go to ILM, I'll bring my, my son David, yeah, so that he can, so that see he it can, all. can see it all, yeah. And so, will you adopt us? <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way. Yeah. This yeah. is Vic and Lau so, or Daz. Yeah. And, he, and he's, you know, re- he he gets it. Yeah. You know, and, and so when I went to Skywalker, you know, brought him back, you know, Sky, oh. uh, stuff and all that, and uh, he's he. he he goes, wow, Dad, uh, you worked on Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> your wife's like, don't do Force Awakens. And your son's like, please. Yeah. I, you know, I haven't been around the Star it, 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 You know, uh, the last three, you know. The prequels. The prequels. The prequels. What was the one after Jedi? Oh, uh, uh, well, there was the Phantom, Phantom Menace, Menace. Phantom Attack, Menace. Of Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the, of the Sith, Sith, which yeah. we don't talk about those movies very often. But they, they have to be big, aren't they? Uh, Money wise, yes. Money wise, are pretty big for this generation. They're big, but hardcore, not for my generation. Hardcore. Let's say, let's say you go to uh, say, I, I went, I went to uh, uh, the uh, the Anaheim uh, celebration. You know, Star Wars. Celebration. Yeah, we were there too. Yeah, we were there. And I just it blew my mind how big it was. Yeah, I, 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 my, it's like I, my eyes big. were like that big, Death Star big, like holy. <clears throat> Walk five thousand people, I think, on average. I think. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was enormous. You know, so I, I, I couldn't get, you know, get, you know, what was the big attractions? The older, the older Star Wars or the newer ones? Well, uh, here's the deal. The, uh, we've said this a thousand times. If the prequels were any good, we wouldn't have gotten Force Awakens the way we did. There, I don't think there would have been as much hype. I think. I, I, I think we we had mentioned on the last podcast that you had said like it's it's it didn't feel it, it felt like a rehash. You'd already kind of seen it, you right? Yeah. It. Our take on it, our, 
we are the type of podcasters and reviewers that don't shy away from the controversy of we, we don't blindly love something because we love it. Uh, we obviously love Star Wars. It's our first go-to thing. But we can't justify the prequels. We understand, like we had mentioned before uh, on the previous podcast with you, that we th- my theory was that he had a lot of yes-men during the prequels, right. which you could tell, like, hey, maybe you shouldn't go in that direction. Nobody was there to say that. Right. We feel like we would have gotten a completely different Force Awakens from J.J. had the prequels been the quality of the same storytelling wise as, as the original trilogy. So for us, nothing beats the old trilogy. We're happy about the force awakens because we feel like it had to have been made. It had to have been made that way to bring the old school people back and be like, right. Hey, this is why you love star Wars because right. they made a conscious effort to do not just digital effects, right. the new stuff, but they had a conscious effort to like, Hey, we, if we can film it, let's make it. You know, let's make that character there. Let's not make that character CG for no reason other than CG. Right. right. So, so we appreciated the fact that he brought us back. But yeah. we had always, we also say if if the prequels were any good and we got the Force Awakens, we would have been pissed because you were just retelling a lot of right. what had already happened. Yeah. But like like, I, like we said, we we think it was made on purpose that way to bring a lot of the old school people back. right. And well, now, uh, now you have the new one coming out, which we said, if the opening shot is on an ice planet with walkers, we're going to be pissed because you, you can't. Yeah, re- now that you brought us back, give me something original. Yeah. Give me something original. Which, if you watch the trailer, it doesn't. I mean, he's still kind of. There's walkers on a desert planet this time. You know what I really? Missed? <laughs> I, I think I may have mentioned it. It's the music. The music. I, I, I came away from. I came away from the last movie without. A feeling. Wait, that's music, Rogue, Rogue One. Rogue One did not have John Williams. Yeah. They had a completely different guy. But who, even still, there's nothing. There was nothing memorable about. I the didn't. Soundtrack. I didn't like the soundtrack at all in that you movie. Know. The Force Awakens or Rogue One? And, and no, Rogue One. Didn't like thing, it at all. You know, there, there's uh, there's cornball humor in Star Wars, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to me, you guys seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, it's like, yeah. Love See, love those that. guys, That's very Star Warsy. Yes, those guys get that kind of humor, you know? They do. That's yeah, yeah. that to me that's Star Wars humor where it's it's missing in the in in these newer movies. There's, it's almost like it's taking itself a little too seriously. Well, the second the unfortunately the the, the one coming up <laughs> yeah. is, looks is way serious their empire it looks like. It looks it like looks it's very serious empire. Like some some I our, our our theory is that some bad stuff is going to happen in that next movie. Yeah. 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 So th- that's what I missed. I missed it, it didn't take itself too seriously because in many ways George was poking fun at the old, some of the older Cereals. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Flash Gordon and all Flash that stuff. Gordon. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Correct, right. you know. And so it, it was like a wink, wink, nod, nod. We know we're doing this. And, you know, you know we're doing this and we're having fun. Yeah, I think yeah. that's why I kind of like Guardians of the Galaxy because it's like yeah. – you know, we're having fun here, folks. Okay, you paid, your, you paid your twenty bucks or whatever. See the movie. You had a good time, right? Yeah, you laughed. But there's, but there, I think there's, I think there's a there's a conscious effort to really stay away from the cornballness that did that's not what, work in the prequels. That's what I think too. The, 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 when that's you, why they're taking themselves too seriously. That's why seriously. you have Jar Jar sipping on shit. Uh, it was well, yeah. Was, I mean, that kind of stuff like, drove uh, me crazy. Like, squeeze me and all that stuff was yeah. like. So really I think they're, they're kind of making a conscious effort to stay away from the stuff that didn't work in the in in the prequels uh-huh. to where, like, now, I mean, there was some kind of break. Like, one of my favorite lines in the entire uh, The Force Awakens was was when um, Finn was like, we'll use the Force. And then now it's Han Solo telling Finn, that's not how the Force works. Like, you just can't <laughs> use it like it's like something you just get. You know, like like little things like that. But I, I think you're right. Like, But again, our opinion is that they're, they're – our theory is that they're purposely staying away from anything that reminds you of the, the prequels. Right. To to be like, hey, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna give you you know trade talk and you know trade and, federation and, and talk poop and jokes and you know poop, like yeah. so we're, we're, I th- I think that's that's our theory is that is that yeah it's it's more serious but I, I think they they have to make sure that it doesn't rem- it, that it reminds you of Empire Strikes yeah. Back that it doesn't remind you of Attackical Clones. <laughs> yeah, what I liked about Force One is that some of the models reminded me of the original Star Wars. Yeah, because it was practical, practical effects. effects. Yeah. yeah, they they didn't do a lot of digital. 
on that stuff. And they so mixed it. In they mixed stories? it. They mixed it. They mixed digital with the practical effects. Like remember that uh, that junk? I forget his name. What's that junk guy's name that Ray was selling the parts to? Oh, that was Simon Pegg. Yeah, but what oh, was his Uncar name? Plot or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So he wore the suit on set, but digitally. They digi- digitized his mouth when he was talking, so that's like a mix of the old and the new, mm-hmm. which is like uh, somebody like Christopher Nolan. Did you see Dunkirk? Not yet. You got to go see that. Oh, shit. It Visually, it's it's stunning. It, it's it's it, it's a it's a really good work of art. It's it's it reminds you of old school filming because he he's he's notorious for if I can film it, I want it made. So like he would actually stick the instead of doing a lot of special effects for like the fighters and the in the aerial shots, he stuck the the cameras on the planes and told them to go take off and filmed it that way. Like he filmed a lot of practical effects. Not a you're lot. You're not of so CGI. far from you're not so far from Sacramento. <clears throat> you should go check it out in IMAX uh, over there because wow. he filmed it in IMAX. Wow. It's it's incredible, man. We just reviewed it last night on our podcast. So that drops Monday actually. That's yeah, it drops this Monday. Yeah, but yeah, go go yeah, if you can. It's yeah. it's it's something else, and I think that's right up your alley too. Get a picture of you guys. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we're we're really looking forward to what Ryan Johnson's doing with the Last Jedi. But we're very like nervous. Who's, who's doing it? Ryan Johnson, who uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, uh, Looper. Looper, right? Looper, um, Brick. Yeah, did you see that Bruce Willis movie, Looper? Where it's, it's a time a, traveling movie, kind yeah. Of. You know, this what was that movie? Uh, it's supposed to be the best visual movie in a long time. Valerian, have you guys seen that yet? Okay, uh, so he, it, he yeah. didn't see it. I saw it. What I thought it was gorgeous. I thought the story was really weak because That's we've what I seen heard. it. I heard visually, it was like unbelievable. well, like I was telling him, I said if they made this movie twenty years ago, it, we would have been. I would have been blown away. But but this was a story written. Years and years ago, because based on a book. So there have already been movies almost like based on Valerian. I mean, there are too many story elements. So right. now this far in the game, putting Valerian out, it's like I've seen this before. Yeah, been there, done that. Some yeah. of the special effects and situations that they did in the movie were unlike anything I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I was like, like Avatar. You know, I saw Avatar. Right. Not yeah. a great, not a great story. We've seen that as Dancing with Wolves in Space. But the visually, it was like. Whole, how did they right. do it? This is amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're going to go into it like that, you'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> My well. computer talks. <laughs> <laughs> it's all wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Frank, again, uh, thanks for spending so much time. Thank with you. Us. Sp- yes, hey, this has been amazing. I, I've been th- 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 really enjoyed it. I, <laughs> yeah. I like you guys. So you know, I want you to do well. You know. No, this is really fun. I mean, we're waiting patiently for our invitations to. Uh, to, I like. I'm just, I'm, 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 to, he's like, keep waiting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask. You know, you know I, I'm really good friends with Steve Gawley. Yeah, you know, who's good friends with Dennis Muir, and so you know, we'll. Uh, I'll ask it's just fun. We're I'll we're ask. just we're yeah, just no huge. Steve? Yeah, I, I, no, I, I don't know that name personally, but I mean, again, I, I probably did twenty, thirty years ago. I mean, I used to read Star he's Wars a, Insider. Original, I used to he's read original Star Wars. Crew. Yeah, it, we didn't I probably have, saw him on that. I probably saw him on that VHS tape. Yeah, that I was telling you. But about. you know, we, he, we don't. He was there at the, at, at the Anaheim. Um, oh, celebration of Anaheim. Celebration. Yeah, he was signing. I mean, back in the eighties, we had, it was Star Wars Insider. That's what we read. To to probably saw you in the magazine at some point. I don't remember, but yeah. that's how we read about you guys. It was like how, like, oh, that's so cool. Were you, like, were you guys uh, really big behind the scenes did guys? You guys get Bantha tracks. Yeah, we had Bantha tracks, yeah. uh, which I think was inside the magazine, wasn't it? Was I that still, the magazine? I don't have a, I don't have a working VCR, but I still have that from Star Wars: The Jedi VCR tape. Let's see if we can find that on DVD, or if you can transfer. I could probably it to transfer DVD. it over, yeah, but like, me, but, but I remember watching that as much <laughs> well, as I watched so yours Star Wars before George went back in and re-edited it. Yes, probably yes. That when he would <laughs> see this is this is this is my love hate. <laughs> now we open that. This, is, this is my love hate relationship with this is my love hate relationship Wait, with George Lucas. People versus George Lucas. I've right. seen that too. <laughs> see that too. But you know, on that on that VHS tape, I remember him specifically like saying that he hated. He loved Star Wars, but he hated what Star Wars brought to Hollywood, which was a lot of movies that had just special effects and no substance. Flash forward 16 years from that, he makes the prequels. And I'm like, George, like, I'm, like I freaking know him. George, do you remember the words that you said? Like, if you could just go back and remember 
who you were. You said the visual effects were just were supposed to be a tool to yeah, help you to tell, tell the story. story. Right. And then now, now he's like, you know. And if you watch, and what's crazy is that he sets that was his own words. Nobody fished it out of him. That was his own words. Then you fast forward, and like I said, we we are huge behind the scenes person. We love knowing how things are made. And you flash forward to the to the behind the scenes stuff for the prequels. He's all about getting the placement of the shot for for the digital effects. And I was like, George, you've just become everything that you didn't want to be as a yeah. filmmaker. There's too many battle droids in this shot. Take that one out. It's I, like there's a there's cares? a very fa- like- there's a scene I remember specifically watching for I think Attack of the Clones and or Revenge of the Sith and he's standing there and Hayden Christensen is trying to get the scene right. And Jar Jar I think is standing in the scene or some shit. And um there's a there's a guy holding that like globe. The Jar Jar head. Oh, the, the, the globe, globe, globe. To, to get the special effects and the lighting or whatever it is correctly. And Hayden wants to do it again, and he wants to get the shot. He wants to get the acting part right. And all he, all George is saying is like, no, 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 we got it, we got it, we got the we got the the effects and everything is right. And I'm thinking. No, let him get the scene right instead yeah, you of have an facing actor the special he'll effects. Do it again. Yeah. You know, so like it, it's things like that that bug me. It's it's like my lo- again, it's my love hate relationship with George Lucas because there's no Star Wars without him. But at the same time, you, as 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 an objective film reviewer that we are, we can't justify some of the things that he did. It doesn't make any we sense. We almost felt know? like the the movies that were the strongest were the ones where people were. Other pushing people him. were directing or pushing him, like, "Hey, that's not a good idea. Let's do this instead." Right. Or the ones where Marsha had a hand in it. Yeah, that's did why she I, edit. Did she edit Empire? Uh, Empire too, or was yeah. it just? Like, a new she home? had a hand in all three of those. Movies. Holy shit! Okay. So that that's yeah. that's a big and, deal. And not only that, <clears throat> uh, I mean, you talk to anybody there who understood the relationship and understood that she was probably the only person who could really tell George that's not working mm. and that he would listen. You know, because she had street cred. So uh, I think those three have her influence. And after that, that influence is gone. So there's nobody really to tell George, this kind of sucks, or this is not working. Or if you did, you're afraid you got fired or some shit, you know? It's just, it it totally changed. Yeah, that's like I said. That's that's my love hate relationship with Lucas. Like I thank him. She's real. For everything I mean, she was really for Star Wars. important to, to yeah. the success. Yeah, like we could see that now of those big three time. of those three movies. You know, and history will bear that out for those who were there. They, you know, it's like how come she's or not, people or people like us who know how come yeah. she's not listed in the books? Well, she's been written out. Yeah, you know, and that's all. It really all comes down to people. You know, uh, people liking people, or if you've. They feel or like, egos or, or all yeah, sorts they, of things. Or, in their case, you know, infidelity, and so yeah, that's a bummer. It, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, if it wasn't for Lucas, we wouldn't be standing here talking to yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, 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 you know, I have nothing bad to say about George. You know, he's human, just like all of us here. So. Right. <laughs> he's, not, he's not Yoda. <laughs> well, even Yoda screwed up in the prequels. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, I got knocked down for a couple of flights. Let me just quit. <laughs> yeah. What kind of Jedi master are you? Just get your ass back up and keep fighting the Emperor. What the fuck? <laughs> he's 900 years old, dude. He's yeah, like, that's tired. <laughs> well, he loses, his, he loses his Jedi robe and just quits. And his lightsaber. Yeah. His original color was blue. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. He was that's a lot so more weird. That'd be he was more weird. elf-looking, too, or yes. goblin-looking. I yeah, that would have been really weird. I yeah. love it. I love the look. Uh, I, I couldn't around. help but laugh in that scene where he's, you know, he's... Jumping around? He's jumping around, you know, fighting that Saruman guy who, you know... Oh, Saruman. Sarah- <laughs> <laughs> he's fighting I, Dracula. <laughs> I mean, come on, didn't you crack up? I started laughing. There are people on, we started laughing. It well, funny. Well, let, t- let me tell you, they... Uh, th- obviously, this was not Disney that owned it at this time, but right. we were... I was at Celebration 2 in Indianapolis at the Rick McCollum specials, what they called it, where they showed off the digital, their digital dick, I guess, yeah. to, to the audience. And they put together this five-minute reel, and it was all digital stuff. So they showed three-quarters of that Yoda fight, which at, when you're there, you're like with the audience. You're just, oh, my God, I can't believe this, you know. And then when I went to go see the movie, I was pissed because I'm like, well, they just like showed the whole thing at that celebration. I'm like, I'm really upset. But I remember the first time seeing him jumping around and the crowd went apeshit. They went nuts because they're like, we get to see Yoda fight, you know? 
He's and a then, faker. Yoda's a faker. <laughs> yeah. That cane. And then when I went to see the movie, like it was like a month later, the movie came out and that scene came up, the audience, everyone in the audience was just like nothing. They weren't clapping. They weren't like, oh my God, Yoda. It's probably because like, it was like out of left that. field. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it it to just didn't to, have the impact. Yeah, to me to this day, you know, there's certain <laughs> fight scenes, you know, with Luke and, uh, the thing and Darth Vader and Jedi, but also the one with Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, the one with the volcano scene. Right. That was amazing. That was directed by Spielberg, actually. Not directed, but his, all his uh, Spielberg's influence is on majority of that fight. Oh, as was, far as like the tower falling and the lava and all that, that stuff. whole thing was. Don't did you it's, think it was spectacular? I, uh, we did, have different it, opinions. <laughs> I did. I did when I saw it in context, but looking back on the on that, it was really overproduced. It was and, too choreographed. Yes, yeah. is that what I mean? Is is? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> they no, no, no. You no, because when you when you watch the Steven. when you watch well, see when you watch the original, and this is the weird thing when you watch the original fights from the original trilogy, uh-huh. if you really like break them down, you're like these look like geriatrics just like swinging at things. Yeah, they're very. But because there was so much emotion it, it, that you forgot about mm-hmm. the. Dynamic of the you forgot that fight. Vader took a dive in Jedi. You know when, when he literally jumps to the that one part of the unnecessarily open open tunnel shaft. Yeah, yeah. that you painted. He he takes a he, you see him choreograph take the dive into that scene. Yeah, looking back on it now, you're like, oh, that's weird. But because you had grown to love and hate Vader so much in the previous two and a half movies up into that scene, you forget about that. The problem with the the fight that you're talking about is the brotherhood that, other than that great speech by Ewan McGregor because he's a great actor, that brotherhood that they're talking about is there's you don't see that in the no, movie. No, and Anakin's because, so laughable that you're just you can't take that, that guy scene, seriously. It, if yeah. you remember in Attack That's of the Clones, probably why he hasn't gotten that much work since. No, and I like he's but a he, good he actor. Can actually, pretty. He, have you ever but, seen Life as a House? Shattered glass. Uh, even there's even a, the, I probably have. Yeah. Life as a house. He plays a troubled teen, basically mm-hmm. Anakin Skywalker, and but Kevin Klein's in it. He plays his father. He, he's a distant father, and the mm-hmm. father finds out that he has cancer. And in the movie, he takes his son for a summer to build a house. To to he, his son doesn't know that he's dying of cancer, mm-hmm. and he takes his son for that summer just to have like one last thing for him to do with his son. The movie is great. I love that movie. I cry still to this day watching that movie. Hayden Christensen is really great in that movie. And then you fast forward to Attack of the Clones, and it's like night and day. It's night and day with... Because with, that emotional stuff that he does in Life as a House mm-hmm. is missing right. from Star Wars. Well, he probably wasn't directed. Like, going back to our That's exactly what we talked direct- about. Yeah. It's like... You know, you know, okay, move saw, on. Let's put a digital you know, shit here. I Let's saw go. That fight scene in Jedi. Again, I worked on the movie. Yeah. yeah. So we were seeing just got goosebumps, clips man. It's so cool. You know, yeah, yeah. In fact, I walked in on George because uh, I was like, I, I can't believe I'm seeing this. I walked in on George. I had to ask him a question about this one scene. He was in the building next next door, and he's editing the scene that I had that I had painted, where uh, they're essentially you know cremating. Yeah. Uh, Darth Vader. Right, yeah. right, right. Oh, I oh. I remember him looking at me like, you're not supposed to be seeing it's, this. It's, yeah. I saw it. I'm like, oh, damn. Because we had nobody read the script. I was like, damn. That's Darth, what Darth Vader's being cremated. Yeah. So, so I, you had no idea that Vader was going to be in that painting that you did? Not oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> Not so they basically just told you you're painting trees yes. and a night you're, sky. You're, yeah, you're doing, doing trees and a night sky, <laughs> and it's going to be a pan. And they, and it was. Down I remember to, that they panned down in the the, the funeral spire, the funeral, yeah, yeah. And, with uh, while well, Luke just standing there. So so I'm there to ask him a question because I'm working on that scene. I'm going, holy shit! It's Darth Vader is being creamed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and George looks at me, and it's that image like. What are you doing here? Yes. What are you? What are you? You will not say anything when you leave this building. Yeah, but it was kind of well. You're afraid to. I mean, yeah. It's like I will you kill build, you. you. That build, would never happen today. Yeah. I, you no. build your own mental cage. Like, okay. The I'm door like, would be locked. Yeah. The door would have been locked. You would have never been able. Your key card would not have been working. <laughs> yeah. So he, I, I forgot. I, I can't even remember that conversation. But he, I told him, "What can I do?" He blah blah blah. Okay. Forget so what it, you've seen here. You walked in on basically the ending of Return of the Jedi. <laughs> the biggest, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But check this out. So 
I'm, I'm definitely motivated to see how the shaft is going to be. Yeah, know, yeah. Filmed. But I felt emotionally so stirred during that scene, you know, because it's it's it, uh, where Darth is, you know, fighting Luke, and it's very blue and very red. You remember? That yeah, scene? yeah, yeah. And the music. Yeah, has oh, this yeah. Amazing crescendo, and I'm going, damn! I'm really feeling something here. I yeah, have, exactly. I'm, I'm getting just whoa! I'm really pulled into this. When he, and, when Luke yells out "Never" and he goes after oh, Vader, because yeah. he's oh. like, "I'll turn your and, sister." But the into music it. is like, it's just, it's like these giant crests that's, just crashing. Right, right. I'm going, whoa! I'm, I'm, I'm back. It's like for one moment. See, I'm looking at that movie as an employee, as a guy who worked on it. Right. Yeah. But at that moment, I went from being an employee into a fan. Fan. It was a, it was a weird but see, juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going, holy cow, I'm really getting into this. And then what, and then when I see my painting, I'm back to being, <laughs> you know, the but, employee, like, okay, that looks good. But see, right good. there, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Because if you really, like, dissect the actual fight, it doesn't, really look like much like Vic and I could just do it right now in front of you well, the but, but a big part of it. a huge no, part music but the emotion, emotion the, the son and father fighting for you know <laughs> right. and he gets pissed because he's like oh I'm not, I can't turn you I'll turn your sister instead whatever and it, it, that yeah. angers him and then no! he uses that anger of the yeah. force to defeat his dad right so that whole thing is awesome. And then you fast forward to like Revenge of the Sith. And yeah, I mean, there's like, the, the, they were buddies in arms, you know, and the, and the Jedi but together. But there's never that camaraderie. There's none that, of like, that. That speech where, where you and McGregor was like, you were my brother. And that it's was like, heartbreaking. No. But that's because he's a good actor. Yeah. Because if you, if you go back and watch, you don't see that because in Attack of the Clones, you know, Obi-Wan is talking to him like he's like a teenage kid, like basically yeah. scolding him for the whole stuff. And then you fast forward to, to Revenge of the Sith. Where there's conversations of them, like you know, where they just rescued the the um, the emperor, the chancellor, yeah. chancellor, and he's like, no, 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 that thing on Nemonia doesn't count, like because you know he says that Anakin had saved him like a, a bunch of times, but there still isn't that brotherhood that like that you and McGregor is like acting that scene out. It's only because he's such a great actor that he pulls the line off. But if you go back and watch the the two movies. It's not there. It, the problem is, is they never show the two of them in a, in those situations. They just they just reference them. Yeah. There's, so the reference doesn't that doesn't do anything. For have me. you have you actually have you watched the Clone Wars series, the cartoon? Uh, no. There's there's shots in there where where Obi Wan and Anakin are actually like Anakin actually goes out like Obi Wan is captured at some point in time, and Anakin goes after him, and you can see like. The, the anger and the desperation and the, desperation and the worriness in, in Anakin. And that was, that's what was missing in, in the prequels where right. you got that feeling like that Anakin loves Obi-Wan that he like in a, in a, in an attachment way that a Jedi is not supposed to. Mm -hmm. And that's where like that separation of where Anakin's supposed to fall to the dark side so easily. You get that in the cartoons where you see Anakin love him more. You know, you could see Obi Wan doing it too, but Anakin goes above and beyond and just goes yeah, against. Well, yes, yeah, it, it, they exactly, fill in all the exactly. Gaps. And, exactly. And, and also, you have to think of Episode One. You got Liam Neeson, an amazing actor. You have Ewan McGregor. Yeah. When Qui Gon dies at the end of that, spoilers. When he <laughs> dies, you you see the emotion. When Ewan he McGregor, yells, "No, you, remember no. that." And yeah. then he, that fight with Darth Maul, all of a sudden, is like. Because like, you see Anik Obi Wan all of a sudden change because before that, yes, they're fighting Darth Maul, but he goes after, after Darth Maul him. like vengefully mm -hmm. in that scene, and that that's what's kind of missing in there. Uh, yeah, it's it's great to look at the I Obi Wan. Think you guys are a little too into this. We're, <laughs> really, into it, we're, really, into it. we're really into it, but it's so choreographed. There's parts in that that fight that drive me crazy. There was a part where they were both swinging their lightsabers together, and then they go, you know, and they're holding. See, you and, know and I'm just like, uh, you know, the last one. To me, that was, it was horrible. My, I came home, my kids. Yeah, you were saying, oh, Dad, like, you're no longer our dad. Were, <laughs> and that's where they're all like ganging it up two against one, Dad. You suck. You know, you just. You, I, you I know, go back and he, forth with that. But movie. it was like, well, it's like. Okay, I, like, I enjoyed why, it. Why, why, did, why is he uh, rebelling against his dad, Han Solo? I, it, it, what he's, oh, the Force he, Awakens. He, right, right, yeah, right, yeah. took away the keys from his car. You know, well, what? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give you well, any, we haven't yeah. filled the gap. There, hopefully. There, there is. Gaps, there's some, I don't well, know. There's two more movies. Yeah, but to me, okay, you're supposed to assume he's really pissed off now. He's going to kill his father. 
See, I didn't get. I yeah, just it's cold. that's a tough one. That's a tough one. No, I, I can't. I can't. I can't justify that yet. But I haven't seen the full storyline, so yeah. we'll see what we'll happens see in the next two movies. Happen. Hopefully, they give us something more original in the next one, and you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah, we'll find out in a couple months. Uh, well, this this felt like uh, Return okay, of the really? King. We have seven endings here. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if you heard George Lucas passed away, how would you feel? Oh, oh I'd be heartbroken. I'd be really heartbroken. I, I would, I would be sad to the point where, I would be sad about that he never got to see the the, the complete vision of his Skywalker saga. Yeah, but I would at the same time, if he was going to do it, I would, I would need, I would, it would feel better for me if somebody else was sitting there collaborating with him. Like he's a great overarching person but as far as like the fine details of the stories he needs somebody pushing him that's my opinion anyway yeah i i, I kind of agree because it's that. I, like i i like the fact that somebody else gets to tell star wars but at the same time it's really sad that the prequels were so i don't know what's the word i'm looking for bad so, <laughs> no so no i know well, uh, there's a lot of stories out there my son reads the star wars books so yeah, yeah. different mm. books so i mean there's a lot there's of, a lot of there's a lot of but it all starts there. with lucas you know as much as we make fun of the prequels it all starts with lucas and it, it it all started and basically ended with him because like the new stuff is not it's not lucas you know it's somebody else's like interpretation yeah it's you know it's somebody else man. it's somebody else basically taking you know those collectible toys and like how we used to tell, you know, how I used to play with toys is make my own story. Yeah. And that's basically what they're doing I, now. I, I forgot who told me this. I don't know if it was Ben or somebody, but uh, George, when he sold the company, he gave Disney treatments for... I heard about that. Yes. Yeah. And they didn't use a single one of them. They said, thanks. Oh, but, no, it's uh, on YouTube. Oh, yeah. It was, it was on YouTube. And he's saying they, they said it wasn't Star Warsy enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's really weird. He said he went a different direction. He's like, oh, they went retro. Because when he even watched it, he's well, like, he's, hey, not, he's not wrong. Let's put it, he's yeah. not wrong. Right. That that to the point where he's like, you know, I like, he said, he basically said, I liked my stories better because I was trying to do something different. And that's true. Yeah. But different wasn't really that good because nobody was telling him no. Right. They you saw know? Trade Federation in the opening crawl of his new thing and they said, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not doing yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it is crazy that you tell the creator of Star Wars that's not Star Wars enough. But, I mean, you, you can see the prequels and say at some point in time he kind of lost his way about how to tell a story. It was all about the digital effects, essentially. Right? So, so in yeah. a sense, that's kind of crazy that you tell George Lucas that's not Star Wars yeah. enough. Yeah. But at the same time, when you watch Which, the prequels, it's like, no, that wasn't Star yeah, Wars. It's weird. I mean, you know? it, it, and it's weird. I, I mean, mean, is that your opinion too, or, or? Yeah, generally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really weird with the digital effects because I remember when Weta was up and coming, like their Lord of the Rings movies came out at the same time as the prequels were coming. About out. that, yeah, yeah. And I remember watching Lord of the Rings, going like. These because they shot looks so much because better. they shot a lot on of location. stuff practical. Yeah. yeah, right. Instead of like going to a blue screen or green screen and sh and and filming like because that scene in Attack of the Clones where they're doing it in the arena. Instead of going to find it's all in room with blue it's, screen it's a everywhere, giant green screen with sand on the floor. Well, yeah. Weta like or Peter Jackson went out to New Zealand and filmed it on location and then added the special effects that he needed. Right. So there's a lot of production value in, in what Peter Jackson did versus, you know, standing again, in front of a green again, screen. You're, you're dealing with somebody who was adapting a really strong story. People who read Peter Jackson, Hobbit. you mean? You're, yeah, Peter Jackson. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Not, read The Hobbit or Lord yeah, of course. Right. the Rings. In fact, after I saw the movie, I mean, I went out and I bought the book. Yeah, I did. You realize too. how much they I did cut too. Out. I bought the art book. I bought all sorts of stuff. Yeah. How much they cut out. <clears> you know, I, uh, they should have cut out the seven endings after Return of the Jedi. But, <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> Revenge of the yeah, uh, I, not Revenge. Uh, <laughs> Return of the King. Jesus. Yeah. Return of the Jedi. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm enjoying reading the book. If it wasn't for watching the movie, yeah. I never would have gotten the book. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely. Yeah. I still haven't read okay, The Force I'm Awakens. Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, right Frankie, thank, thank you so, so, yeah, so much. This was a pleasure. Absolute yeah. pleasure. So fun. I'm sure there's... The pleasure's mine. There's, <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more stories, too, that we just haven't... We actually we, we wanted to talk about more of your other movies, and we only got to three. Yeah, but Star Wars always yeah. just seems to trump yeah, everything, somehow. you know, always. Well, but, it's, uh, it's, it's the biggie. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Well, uh, this was uh, Chew on This, a Nerds United podcast in Frank Ordaz's uh, gallery in Auburn, which you, you haven't plugged. You should, you should have plugged that. Yeah, yeah. give us give us the 843 Lincoln Way in beautiful Auburn, California. Come on down. 
Uh, bring bring a bottle of bourbon. Yes, yes. <laughs> talk yeah, Star Wars, yeah, but only off. with bourbon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you over, heard it here. <laughs> over ten grand. <laughs> if you mention chew on this, he'll give you ten percent off. But you have to bring a bottle of bourbon. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Be sure to bring a staff approved coupon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was Chew on this Energy Night podcast. I'm BJ. Vic. Until next time, folks, chew on that. Later. <laughs>